three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching another episode of Ash on Comics. Episode 142, brought to you tonight by uh, no sponsor, Samuel Adams, special summer ale, citrus wheat ale. I got this in a variety pack. I'm pretty stoked. Samuel Adams is one of my favorite beers. They don't pay me a dime to say anything, but uh, this is a pretty good beer. Uh, also joining me uh, is fellow alcoholic, uh, Real Dr. Vankman. How you doing, Mr. Vankman? <sighs> I'm doing great. How's it going? Oh, it's good. We've got a nice refreshing beer on the palate. And then also sneaking in here like a little ninja is uh, one of the Zach brothers. How you doing, Zach? Other boy, Zach? Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? I did kind of sneak in at the last minute. Oh. <laughs> I saw open invite. and I was like, you know what? Why not? Why not? Hop it's a party. Over. Oh, man. You let one in, the all five will come in. That's, that's true. <laughs> it's like roaches. It's short horse. <laughs> you see one roach there's a hundred you don't see ah so now i'm a roach now i see how this comparison goes <laughs> i thought i was a uh, roach that's what i was trying to no, well as i say roaches you, you can like kill fleas you, you can i don't know dude roaches can live underwater for like three days have you ever tried to kill a roach you ever like, peed on one before they don't like it and uh, we're canceled all right this show <laughs> is exciting no wonder i get no views um anyways uh, let's see who's uh, joined us in the chat uh melissa is first tonight uh, congratulations melissa we got dragon majesty hr goes vocal formerly known as ff2 also known as hr on the mic i don't know why you have all these different names hr but um then you do you uh <laughs> Yeah, let's see who else. Uh, me, I'm here. Dragon Ball Talk it says Nacho Boy. I don't know how he knew that I had nachos today, but it's kind of worrying me. Um, He's stalking you. It really. He found you. Yeah. What? What an idiot! Who'd go to California to stalk someone? Uh, I'm, it's, <laughs> I'm a little worried. I, I had a big old, big old plate of nachos, carne asada nachos. Oh man. Well, I'm glad I'm not downwind from you. Ooh. <laughs> yeah you are uh let's see let you're on lockdown you can only kill your dog <laughs> we already yes. mentioned other boy zach uh Mar marania is here good to see marania and lord is in the house and those are all the people that have actually said something in the chats though so far um let's see she's de Marania's debate prepping to bake either lemon pound cake or raspberry bars or both um both both um, yeah why both In is good insert meme why not both um let's see uh, man I, well i want lemon bar lemon bars is, is yeah you should make lemon bars and send me some um, lemon bars are the best i don't even like lemons but lemon bars those things are amazing yeah uh, let's see. The new Static Shock is BLM pandering trash and Harley Quinn is only in Melissa is always got the uh, the the uh, <laughs> SJW radar going, and she can sense it a mile away. Let's see. Uh, Dragon Match. She's that's a great Van Halen song, Pound Cake. It is from the best era of Van Halen, Van Hagar. You guys are supposed to agree with me at that point. <laughs> I, I have zero knowledge, so I'm just what? gonna. What? I'm not. Are you, are you 20 I'm, years old? I'm oh, 33. <laughs> Good gravy. I only look 20 years old. <laughs> I'm only three years older than you are, and I know they are. Apparently, look, apparently, you're, apparently uh, V, you're on the tail end of the. I uh, do. Be fair. I have a six year older a brother who's six years older than I am, and us, you know, older, much older sibling. So. I know who Van Halen is. And they went horribly wrong when they got the guy from the extreme. Remember the 90s? <laughs> Melissa, Melissa, <laughs> Melissa says, the rules of Batman are as follows. He doesn't use guns, he doesn't kill, and he doesn't have sex with criminals. <laughs> oh, I just find that funny with all the um, 
controversy uh, that's going on in well, Westford right now. Wait, wait, talking about Batman? Yeah, he had sex with Catwoman, who is a criminal. Yeah. yeah, well, she's an anti-hero now, so uh, on she's the only a criminal like, like a third of the time. On a rooftop where anybody could be like, hey, what's out there from a balcony? I'm going to take a photo of my cell phone. Eh. But, but to be <laughs> fair, to be fair, before I make all this noise, um, he didn't have sex with Catwoman, to my knowledge, until Tom King. I'm pretty sure he was with Catwoman before Tom King. Wait, was Tom King self-earth inserting his face again as uh, Catwoman? Uh, Although I have to I have to I have to back that up a bit anyway. It doesn't really matter, right? Because we know he had a kid with Talia Al Ghul. True. Also That's true. So I mean <laughs> the evidence is there. Um so I apparently about Mo- that. apparently Melissa Batman does have sex with And he's up with Barbara Gordon. Um No. No. Killing when did joke? that happen? Killing no, joke? we don't we, we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't She's not a criminal. I broke I criminal. broke the cardinal. Yeah, but she's like one step above minor. So it's have you just have you seen, have it's you worse. Seen, yeah, but have not you a seen minor. Her lately? One step above minor is not a minor. This have you seen? True. Have you seen her lately in Bad Girl Fifty? She's pretty much a criminal. I don't. Trying to, she's Batman. trying to get. She's trying to extort money out of Batman. Where's my allowance? All right, I gotta set the timer here. Thirty <laughs> minutes. We'll be reading Thor. <laughs> I have to get the party started tonight because we're gonna be doing three issues of Thor tonight to wrap this up because. Couldn't e- couldn't be an even number of issues, so it had to be an odd number. You're gonna We're do gonna... so much reading, your jaw is gonna be so Thor at the end of the night. Oh, but are we taking turns reading issues? No. No. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jimmy joined us. How you do- How y'all doing? He says. How y'all? Is that how you talk out there in Washington? I he... thought he was saying like, "How y'all doing?" I... Like, get a little bit of a mafia. Yo, how accent. you doing? I, yeah, like that, like a Stallone. Now that's kinda. you. They don't. Mafia doesn't say y'all. That's true. <laughs> the, <laughs> southern, the Southern Mafia how, does. How you? How you doing? That's the Southern how, Dixie Mafia. The Southern Dixie the Mafia. Southern how Dixie y'all Mafia. How, how y'all doing, sugar? Hey y'all, how you doing over there? You got uh, that moonshine? You got that good stuff? Mm-hmm. How you doing over there? How you doing? Doing great. <laughs> Nothing, and this is the last night Ash ever had open invites on his live stream. So, for those of you who aren't quite aware <laughs> yet, Backyard Moments, um, spoiler alert, is Vankman. Um, you said that there's nothing quite like sitting in your backyard, grilling some steaks, and drinking ice cold Miller High. I thought you were a Coors Banquet guy. I drink all kinds. Well, I th- <laughs> I'd say Miller's and Coors probably the, the most. I don't really. Don't for the the weird ones we have your pink extended like you're drinking with Astoria. Well, like, times, is that was called Astoria. Astute, whatever it was. Stella, the one got, uh, Stella Artois. Stella, Stella, Stella Artois. <laughs> yeah, isn't that what, isn't that what you drink? It's hardly. I mean, come on. It's if it's under if it's under ten dollars a six pack. It's not not that. I I like the banquet and I love the champagne of beers. You know. I know that's why I was saying. Or yeah. is, wait, is Miller the champagne of beers? Miller's the champagne of beers, and uh, Coors is the banquet. Oh from the my goodness. <laughs> 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 Miller is definitely not the champagne of beers, but um, this Samuel Adams I'm drinking is pretty damn good. Uh, I gotta, get I, you drunk. I, you I got, get you, I was thinking the same thing. You get you drunk. <laughs> you get you drunk. It's five point three percent alcohol by volume, so. <laughs> Um, I love Dave Chappelle. That's the best Chappelle skit, or one of the best Chappelle skits, I should say. Uh, he's got a lot of good ones back in the day. Um, he does. That's just one of the most memorable. So my store me. keeps having these sales on beer, and they Is do this. They do this no, I'm not an alcoholic. I must buy beer. <laughs> no, but when it's, it's when it's cheap. So what? The, yeah. Hey. Yeah. The thing I, is, I is it's ten ninety nine a twelve pack. For and I mean when it's like Sam Adams, that's that's good. Yeah. Normally it's sixteen ninety nine, um, and so it's you know ten ninety nine. That's like six bucks off. Uh, and so I, I bought this this uh twelve pack of bottles, and it's like a variety pack. And they have like four different kinds, so I'm trying them out. So tonight is the summer ale. Um, mm. it's a citrus wheat yep. ale. It's pretty good. Uh, you ever had their Oktoberfest ones? Mm-hmm. The, there's a pumpkin one, isn't there? 
Or there was? Well, there is pumpkin ales, but not, the Ugh. Samuel Adams Oktoberfest is not a pumpkin ale. Um, <laughs> Sounds weird. But yeah, Sam pumpkin. Adams Oktoberfest is one of my favorite beers, especially if you can find it on tap. That's then again, you, you think about Scrooge get drunk off of eating uh, rotted pumpkins, you know, pumpkins. You know, why wouldn't they just do that in the beer? Demons. Uh, maybe. I guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, that's alcohol is just fermented fruits and vegetables anyway, so. We need more pumpkins. You can ferment it. You can make a liquor with it, right? I mean, Jesus, the Mexicans figured out a way to do it with cactus. So, I mean, so the, if I just use eggs, ferment those. That's not a oh. fruit or... That's not, <laughs> oh, that's I don't know not what not part of fruit or vegetable <laughs> was difficult to understand. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, they do the sodas. There was always the flavored sodas now. They're not their new flavored beer. Can you imagine it? Flavored scrambled egg beer. <laughs> That's, that's this one weird. tastes like steak. <laughs> Christopher Barker is in the house. He says, hey, Ash, reading Justice League Vengeance is fine. Eradicator has taken over the Hall of Justice. All right. Ooh. Cool. Cool. Um, I, I don't, don't know if I, I've read that. One. I don't know what that is, but sounds cool. Uh, Dragon Man, she says, Batman did have sex with Catwoman in the new 52. Cat, Catwoman number one by Judd Winnick. Uh, did it, were they really putting sex in the comic books back then? They... You're on the rooftop. She straddled him. They're sitting up in position. She took off her thing. You saw her purple bra. And then they went away from that. What is this? There was this modern necessity of putting sex in the comics. I don't get For the it. male readers, I guess. I don't know. I, don't know. I was a male reader I back mean... in the 80s and 90s. And just the just the titillation of just like sexy girls. And you know, I would like, was it like, like we didn't need. I mean, there were porn comics for sure. The I mean, I mean, I, I can actually remember certain comic books. I can stores. attest to those, says Ash. No, no, I can remember in the, during the day that there were some comic book stores that had like the back room that you had to be 18 or older to go because these comics were really explicit, like like hentai level gross. Um, yeah, and they, that was it was kind of a novelty to be like, what the hell are you guys doing? It was like the indie of the indie books, though. Uh, no, no publishers right. were really doing that, and certainly not Marvel or DC. Like it was fine just to be. I didn't need to see Peter and Mary Jane having sex. Like I had no desire, you know, for that stuff. Like I just, I don't, I don't understand the idea of mixing everything. If I wanted to see sex, there was plenty of media well, and things to see that. You want the answer to this? It's called lack of morals. Well, here's oh, let, me, let me let me. I was gonna say I know we've brought up several times about how comics today are mainly they're not made like they're marketed to male readers. They're all made to to advertise and appeal to female readers. The sex stuff is what appeals to the male readers. If you yeah. if you have a book with a sex scene, I guarantee you get buzz, word of mouth going about it. You're gonna have every red blooded American male picking up that book. Well, that's I, I'm a red blooded American male and I'm not well, picking it up. Every um, well, here's, speaking, let me draw, let me draw the conc- let me draw the analogy a little further. I never had a desire to see M- M- Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse going at it. Well, that's good. That means you're not into furries. That's that's a good thing. Is that how Pluto was made? <laughs> I, I never had a desire to see Homer and Marge going at it. You know, like I don't. It's I don't web. need. Sure. I don't need or feel a desire to mix sex with every aspect of my life and every aspect of things I enjoy. And, you know, I I think sometimes things are just better off being what they are, right? I didn't need a raunchy sex scene in Star Wars where, like, Han and Leia are just getting it on. Like, do we... Or Han and Rey. Like, if you are... (laughs) Me, I feel like... If you can't go without that, if you need every piece of media that you consume in your life to have that, if you feel like, oh my god, these just it's just not I'm just not fulfilled in my Batman comics unless Batman's going down and performing oral on Catwoman, I think you're r- reading Batman for the wrong reasons. Like Dragon Majesty nails it right here. He says most comics are not written for kids these days. Uh, which is true. They're when they're not pandering and doing all the weird social political stuff. 
they're writing comics for the same people who were buying comics when they were kids. The yeah. story, the storytelling just evolves and ages with the reader base. If you want so, kids stuff, look, you look at the Marvel action that the Marvel's doing through IDW. Those are yeah. kid oriented friendly, right? Or or the, or the Sonic the Hedgehog and all that stuff, you know, stuff like that. Well, here, here's the thing too: I don't necessarily need comics to be kiddy. No, like you oh, can, no, of course not. you can make a good all age story, like Star Wars. The original well, Star Wars is all ages. It's appropriate; kids can watch it. But if you're an adult, you don't feel like it's dumbed down for kids. Like it's, it's just a decent story. Go I watch, think they feel it. Go watch the original Jurassic Park. Same thing. It appeals think... appeals to everyone from eight to eighty eight. You know, they didn't need in the yeah. middle of Jurassic Park like, oh, let's get it on. Have a sex scene. I think they're at the the assumption that adults buy more comics than kids. Kids get the answer parents, and then the parents don't have the money because, you know, they don't want to spend it on that. They'd rather spend it on going movie and stuff. That's where Marvel is, like, capitalized. You know what? We could get more money out of these out of these people, the kids and stuff, you know, by going to see the movies versus the comics. They know that, you know, because that's how they market that way. They know the adults will buy the comics. Regardless how cringe it is, because they want they love their characters a lot. Now I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying everyone does, but you know I know Ash. I'm not saying that you. Well, you might be the exception to the rule actually, and you and a few other people like Eric Breen. I just had enough of this. Uh, but they've realized that they can make they have other way, other means of making money when it comes to the kids. So that's why they they target the the comics towards the adults. You know the I kids have the toys, the cartoons. So they realize that it's easier for them to just have the kids watch cartoons or watch the movies and get the toys versus trying to simplify the comics down for the kids. Wherever, wherever, as I say, for all of them. Where Stan Lee back in the day, it was for kids. It was for everyone. It wasn't just targeted by anybody. It was for everyone. You know? Look, look, I'm not yeah. going to pretend that I'm some high horse Puritan, right? I've, I've watched porn before. Sometimes I like a really risque you know, uh, R-rated what? film or whatever. I just don't understand the need to mix that with everything, right? I don't... I, I also think it's really weird how they say, this scene with Batman and Catwoman on a roof, this is totally cool. But, oh, no, no, we can't have Batwoman doing this to Catwoman in a cartoon show. That's too much. Like, that's, that's, yeah, it's aimed towards adults and actually says mature. Yeah, TV, you know, but my... Also- my yeah, no, I understand that, but like, how is is one different? Like, obviously, it's a little bit more graphic, you, you know, probably, but like, it's still the same thing. It's still Batman and Catwoman still doing, uh, you know, adult like like sex we talked stuff. about on Isla Comics last night about this, or not, not last night, but Monday. We said the chances are they're just going to show him popping his head up from the cover. You're just going to see his horn, his ears, and that's it. She's talking to Harley, and you're just going right. to you'll just see his ears from, but, from uh, but that's about it. Yeah, well, my point just is, though, it's this kind of double standard. Like, DC yeah. says, oh, well, it's not, we can't have it in this cartoon, even though the cartoon is not meant for children. Uh, you know, we can't have it in this, but, oh, we'll, we'll put it in Detective uh, Comics. We'll my other question comics. is, what if this is all staged, just to get attention on the show? That, yeah, that that also, I had that thought as well. The, they'll... I noticed they some of these companies will do that. They'll they'll do these things to try to manufacture. Well, I, I think I think there's probably a little bit of truth to that because you 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 push the envelope as far as you can and you shoot for things like oh let's have Batman going down on Selina and it's like whoa whoa time out we can't have that. It draws attention. It gives you free publicity and now. All of a sudden, people are like, "Whoa! This 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 new Harley Quinn is like an adult cartoon. Like I didn't like I didn't know. Like let me go check it out because it definitely obviously is. And I just first of all, I'm like Harley Quinn is she comes from a cartoon for kids. That's her origin. The Batman animated series. Why are we making lesbian sex cartoons with her? Why is she becoming this icon for for gay pride and just sexual debauchery?" I don't know, but apparently that's where we're going because that's the only audience that's going to be left for mainstream comics anymore. Uh, I make this joke. I don't know if you guys will get it, uh, that comics is going the way of share. Um, you know, I don't know if you know the music artist share. I'm familiar. With she that. got real old and kept making music and she, 
she attracted like she became the defend like the music artist for drag queens for a while like and it was like well i got no other audience i will just cater to these people because they're the ones that so it seems like the comic industry is kind of going the same way like oh well you know certain audiences our old audiences are gone we have this niche audience that's left let's just go hard into the paint towards them and it's like okay <laughs> I, I just don't understand. Once once you do this, you can't go back. Once you sexualize, like, once you turn your children's stuff into adult stuff, and I don't mean by adult in just that it's higher level drama, but adult in that it's, you know, extra sexualized and things like that. You can't bring that back. Right? It's It's going to be forever identified as that. Anyways, uh, anyways, Eric Breen says, this. Eric Breen's in the chat. What's up, Breen? Says, hey, Maranya, remember when this show was about comic books? This show doesn't. He's, he's cracking a joke. At us. Yeah. You, remember when, you remember when Eric Breen used to come into the actual, like, hangout this, calls? This, actually, <laughs> this, this, this conversation is actually about comics. Um, <laughs> it's... <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't have to do with tonight's comic, as Marani is wondering, but the conversation rarely does. Um, Green says, I slept through those shows. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Jimmy says, hold on. So Eric says, they don't need to be written for kids, but they shouldn't be written for Ron Jeremy either, which is a great comment. And Jimmy says, Eric's so old. He just made a reference of Ron Jeremy. <laughs> Uh, written for Jeremy, still wait, alive. Written for or written with John, Ron Jeremy? I think he says written for. Uh, Chris Boyes, why is Ash butthurt over a character being lesbian? I'm not butthurt over a character being lesbian. I am a little bit butthurt that like 50% of all new female characters introduced in comics are lesbian. And I'm also butthurt that you're taking the sexuality and that and focusing that's being the comic about. Tell me a comic. Just... I, what What mainstream comics are all about like straight let's be straight like it's it's not it it's it's this double standard of like we can promote this sexual identity till mm -hmm. the cows come home but we'll never be about this other one and i don't like to see that and first of all and second of all i just talked about it i don't really want my comic sexualized period <laughs> like i want batman fighting the joker and and solving cases and doing stuff i don't i don't need to see lesbian sex. I don't need to see any sex. I don't need it constantly thrown in my face. But what's happening is with these new agendas is like, look, look, we got gays. There's more so many gays. Like, okay, it's it's now twenty twenty one. Hey, hey, avoid I, the I was, male gaze. I was there back in the nineties when North Star was proudly proclaimed I too am gay and we made a big deal out of it. Can we move on? We're two decades from that over <laughs> Um, oh, Wes from I think a critical. He said, "Like I bet you, the next character to become gay is Tim Drake." And I, and I was okay. just like, "No, Tim Drake." <laughs> I, I I mentioned this in the chat on eStream earlier. I just I know people have been talking about. I've seen like YouTubers talking about it, but like I just don't think that they've done that with him though, because I think that if they were truly intent on turning Tim Drake gay or bi or whatever. You don't think that they would be announcing that all across Twitter, all of DC Comics, social media? You say, the newest gay pride hero, Tim Drake. You, they, I, I don't believe it. Um, that's just me, though. But, you might so be right. They, you might be right, I, but I on the other especially, hand... Especially, especially in Pride Month, I mean, this is like the month. If they were going to turn Tim Drake by, they'd be like proclaiming it everywhere. So, who was I don't know. Who, who was uh, the female Robin? Not Stephanie, the other one. No, from that the, was it. Stephanie from, Brown. No, no, no. Frank, the Frank Miller one. Oh, that was Carrie Kelly. Was she gay? I don't know. She was only around for that one. She story, was not she? sexualized. Yeah, she she wasn't sexualized. She'll be gay soon. Well, she was only around for that one story. And then they'll come on and say that she's a man. You know what? We yeah, what would be better <laughs> is if we could just have comics. Where you didn't know, you could just be like, I don't know if they're gay or straight because they're not right. sexualized. Let's just have stories. Exactly. Eric, you got to wait till we start the comic. Then you go to bed. Yeah, Jeez. Eric, you're going to bed too early. Cheese, man. Man. Uh, just like so, the Yankees. No, I was going to say, <laughs> that's, what, that's what Yankees fans do, Eric. They go to sleep before the comics start getting read. 
Well, well no, they, they, they do that when, they're, when their team's losing, they leave. Don't be a Yankees fan, be a Red Sox yeah. fan. Yeah, yeah. No one should so, be a Yankees fan. You can be any I, fan, fan of anything else. Yeah. Is anybody uh, excited for the, the second episode of Loki? That's tonight, huh? Yeah, two, and well, yeah, an, an hour from now. Assuming, well, hour, my, hour uh, I assuming my internet doesn't go out again, uh, I'll be watching. I told it. you, I have Discord. You can just watch it through your phone and in Discord, can't you? Well, yeah, but I mean, the internet is up and working okay. now. I haven't so. seen Loki, and this is my not, show, I'm so not... we're not going to talk about Loki. Um, no, we're not going to spoil it. No, no, I, don't, I, there's an, I don't even want to talk about it because I can't participate. And like I said, it's my show, so it's, it's kind of silly. Okay. Um, Are we talking about new comics tomorrow? So tomorrow is new comic book day. Oh. Um, and uh, this was on my pull list. I'm very excited. Tomorrow is going to be a – I mean, it's not many comics, but two big ones that I'm super – I mean, three technically with Usagi Ojimbo, but – Usagi Ojimbo has just been so solid for 35 years. I don't get excited over it in the same way because it's like it's another great issue. But uh, Ultra Mega, I am just absolutely head over heels with this book. And Berserker is really cool. I mean, it's only on issue three. Um, but after the last issue, um, I'm very cool, excited. And there's a uh, foil cover that I got mm. my store to order me. I don't, I, They don't have a picture for it yet, but I was like, give me this cover. I don't know what it is. I think it's the same cover as this, as the number three, but foil. It's going to be Keanu Reeves as Berserker. He's going to be on the cover, and he's going to say, you're wonderful for getting this cover. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be the same cover, and just where the gray is, it'll be foil. I'm kind of hoping that that's the case. It's really weird is that they've been doing this these things, and the foil is like a variant, and it's the same price. Where DC charges you in a whole dollar just for cardstock. Mm. Right? It's like booms like here's foil for the same price. There you go. <laughs> um <laughs> it's not the main cover though. That's not that's kinda weird. I always think that everyone would want foil. Am I, I guess am I wrong? I don't know. Are you guys interested in shiny? Uh not I'm not too Ooh. big on the foil covers, <laughs> honestly. Unless I'm getting it just to have like a collector's item. Like, if I'm getting a reader copy, which is what I get 99% of the time, I'd rather just have a normal cover. That's just me, though. All right. So. Ooh, I got seven comments in my pull list tomorrow. I've got four. four. Ash, has two, Ash has two on the screen right now. I've got so, four on my screen, but I'm probably only going to get three. So yep. here's, the, here's the new comics that are coming out. Um, oh, there's, I, there's I find two this, of them right there. I yep. find this very yep. interesting that this – is number one on the popularity. Dude, Flash, Flash no, but, has been good. Yeah, but look at this cover. Uh, it's, it's, it's Heroes uh, in Crisis re revisited. Is there another cover? What's the alternate? I don't know, but I mean, it's uh, Heroes in the story is what I'm. I'm not. It's not that the cover's bad. The Everyone supposedly bad. hates Heroes in Crisis, so. But apparently, this... they want to go back to it. It's weird to me. Oh, that, well, that alternate cover looks sweet. Yeah, the alternate cover is really nice. I like that one a lot. I'm going to see if they have that one. I think this Nightwing I, cover looks sweet. Uh, I, I think Nightwing, I think I'm about to drop it. It just hasn't wowed me. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it several. sucks. I, 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 I am in it no has... way endorsing any DC comics, but, you know, a cover can still be cool. It, it hasn't sucked. It's just been just kind of slow. I, I don't know. Maybe if it was like a trade, I might check it out at a later date, but... Uh, it just hasn't been wowing me so far. I've, read, I've been picking up the past two or three issues. So what do you and, think of uh, this? Miles Morales is getting his own clone saga because we can't mm -hmm. do anything original with Miles. <laughs> he has to be exactly a black Peter Parker in every way. Wow. that That's just what Marvel's been doing I'm in general. I'm just curious the, the read to see if they do anything different. Let the tokenization continue. Of the well, character who what... can never be his own, <laughs> he oh, just has to copy, well, walk in the footsteps of Peter forever. I did see in the last issue that Spider Man was helping him in the issue. I mean, Marvel's just been doing this though; so they take all but... of their great selling Ooh. events from the past and just reusing them. They did it with Heroes Reborn. They did it with Annihilation. Now they're doing it with the Clone Saga. I mean... So Doug says, "So New Mutants is number four in popularity." Um, remember, this is Hellfire Gala. So 
Uh, it's Hellfire. probably promoted due to that. You skipped uh -oh. over number three. Isn't that the final Venom? I didn't skip yeah. over it. I was just addressing Doug's question. So, oh, oh, okay. Well, it? you went down to Spider-Man Clone Saga. You went to the next Well, part. I mean, Venom was on my pull list. I already saw it, but we can talk oh, about okay. Venom. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like this has been talked about. It's the final Donny Cates issue. It's a $10 comic. Um, and it's got, well, it's, big, $10. it's got a big 200 on there because it's really number 35, but Marvel likes to, <laughs> likes to con it's, um, it's well, no, 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 you mistake. That's not the legacy number. That's how many variants there are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Good Lord. It, it just keeps on scrolling. Oh yeah. Holy let's go cow. through the variants. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Yeah, I think I mean, I think there's more than 35 variants in there. Golly, some of them are kind of cool. Oh, speaking of which, I got my uh my variant copy in Sudai Mart one for uh uh was it Dynamite Lives? Got that in today. That one I'm gonna have to look into. I saw y'all talking about that. I think last week. I am I am uh, going to pick up the Captain America annual number one because it's not Cantwell. It's Jed McKay. Uh, Jed McKay, to... yeah. I, anything Jed McKay writes for Marvel, I'm going to give a shot uh, because I've been like I've been pleased with what I've read from him so far. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm not worn out, I'm, but the thing is, I'm not like I know Ash. I think you're worn out from the Infinity Stones. I never read the Infinity. Are you Stone talking about this book here, this Captain America? Yeah, this is Gary Duggan. Oh, okay, okay. Gary Duggan. Oh. McKay's right there next to him, though. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. So it's probably going to have cool, multiple right? stories. Oh, yeah, Ed McKay is doing this Fury backup story. Oh, uh, well, never mind. So this is part of the one. Infinite Destinies, where they're going to do an event crossover through all the annuals. Mm. So be prepared. Ah. If you're going to buy these annuals, you buy all the annuals. You get the whole story by Gary oh. Duggan. Blech. Pass. What? Yeah. Um, I don't know that I'll be Gary Duggan. I know the I first am... one, Iron Man, was done by Jed McKay. Yeah, Iron Man was Jed McKay. Black Cat has been Jed McKay. He's been writing the Avengers Mech Strike miniseries, which has been fun. Okay, so maybe I... that's maybe you're getting off all these different writers, and it's just... It's, I don't know. What I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's still actually one big, been... long co crossover. I, I'll just say, I don't know. I'm kind of excited because the first issue with, with, with Iron Man was actually being Iron Man. Yeah, it was no politics and all that crap. And all. it was actually Iron Man doing action stuff and as Iron Man with a purpose. You know, it, it, dude, you get Marani to like an Iron Man story, you know you passed it. Well, no look, theory. look, I'm happy for Iron Man fans, and I'm happy that you can be positive about the book. But I look at it from another side of the coin. I don't celebrate non suckage, like, and that seems to be what happens. Like with with Iron Man, it's like, look. We're just sucking it up forever. We're just making shit, shit on a plate. Da, da 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 da. And then it's like, here's a McDonald's hamburger. Oh my god, it's the best thing I've ever eaten. Well, yeah, because you're used to shit on a plate all the time. I, don't, I only buy the books that are great. I don't buy the books that are crappy ones. You know, I, I skip. Them I'm not that. telling I, you to buy the crappy books, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> we shouldn't get down on hamburgers, bro. We shouldn't be I celebrating either. that you just made a pretty good comic. I you know like what I'm saying? McDonald's like that should be the expectation. Right, like, well, oh, you did your job. Oh, awesome! Like, we should just be like, cool. That should be every single day. And what we should be I doing is that. celebrating when you do something amazing. We when should only make... be buying the good ones, not we... buying the crappy ones. Correct. But... I'm just trying to to. I understand what you're to saying. Yes, yeah, devil's you know. advocate on the thing. Like, I don't, I don't like being impressed that you didn't screw the pooch, sort of thing. Like, yeah. hey, you didn't suck. Like, oh, okay. I, I should do, you know, it's like going to McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, oh, you yeah. didn't, you didn't mess up my order. I'm so odd. Like, here's a tip. Like, no, that's what you should do. Um, oh my gosh. Look I'm at the guy about with, with Loki on there. I wonder if that's even Loki in the book or it's just, you know, they're throwing in there for the clickbait. I don't know. It's Valkyrie. Which, uh, Valkyrie. Yeah, I forget that. <laughs> remember, remember, Loki's a good person now. He's an anti-hero. He's not a good person. And he, it's only been the first episode. No, We're no, not I, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. The comics. Since well, here's the thing. They, they rebooted the them. They made. They have opened the gates. I'm not. I'm not going to spoil Thor for people who haven't read it. But if you read the last, the Donald Blake arc of Thor, 
they open the gates for Loki to be whatever they want to do. <laughs> uh, so I, I think they might be making Loki. I, I hear, I don't know about a hero, but you know, like, well, I mean, mar modern Marvel yeah. heroes are all just anti-heroes anyway. They're all just messed up. It was in uh, Loki, Agent of Asgard. He picked up the hammer and had the power of Thor. For, yeah, that you know, weird. For, for like a panel. That's dumb. He was also in that. He was also in one of the Young Avengers volumes yeah. too, I think, which is also weird. But uh, Walking Dead number seventeen, man. I, I, yeah, apparently they're gonna go through this. They're gonna release every single issue, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. And, I'm, and I'm I hope all them. the fans get to enjoy it. Um, what's really bothering me is that Ultra Mega. Is down here, and Radiant Black is way up here. Radiant Black oh, is yeah. terrible, and this Oof. this might be the best comic on the stands, in my opinion. Like it's oh man, it's Fortnite's awesome. even about that. Well, yeah, I'm actually Fortnite. surprised this isn't number one. <laughs> these these, <laughs> are, these are immediately fifteen dollars, like on the stand. They're yeah, they're on my it's on my yeah. pull list. Like I said, like, like, a lot of these things, I'm probably gonna sell them. Uh, I've got. Um, I'm getting one. It, it's it's way down in the bottom. It's from Aftershock Comics. They have a new series coming out called. Uh, what was it? I just saw it here. Oh, Jupiter's Legacy. That, Why isn't this higher? Not I'm, Jupiter's the Seven I'm, Swords. That's what it is. There's so many things in my like. You click the miniseries. I had that. Was it Winter? So the Justice League with the Winter story with. Uh, yeah, most Winter. Is that? I'm I'm afraid to sell my copies. And I'm like, what if they don't make a trade of that? I'm it sure is. they will. They're probably just going to wait for Christmas or something to come around or like winter time. <laughs> well, hear me ask you a question. Was it really? Story. Was it really that good? I liked it. There okay, were parts well. of it that were really good. Were well, then, then hold on to them until they make a trade. I'm, I'm going to. I'm there saying, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because otherwise, I thought, about, I thought about getting rid of them, you know, because I figured like, well, they're probably going to the trade. But now I'm thinking about it. it's been like a year, and I'm I'm thinking with these Fortnite ones, you know, eventually I I'm probably going to trade of that too and just get rid of the individual issues. Okay. So okay. there's this series that I'm interested in called Seven Swords. Uh, it has number one coming out tomorrow. It's got a very uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen kind of vibe to it. Uh, it's all these sword fighters and swashbucklers from different pieces of literature. I think the main hero is D'Artagnan from yep. Three Musketeers. But That's you got like, cover. yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's somebody. The writer, I think, is uh, he worked on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, the illustrator, I've never, the artist, I've never heard of, uh, Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo uh, Latino. Uh, I don't know if he's writing or if he's doing the artist. It says there's. Two what's the interior like? Does it look like the cover? I don't know. I haven't seen the interior. Oh, oh, oh that's the first issue. Well, yeah, they only the have one part. artist credited, so it looks like the most likely here, the cover artist is the interior artist. Yeah, it's Chris. It's Chris Daughtry's pen name. Oh, uh, okay, okay. No. Um, but... hey, Magabats is in the in the chat. Welcome, Magabats. A long time no see. Um, that's, uh, that's AKA the... Sergeant Bats for those of you old school members. Um, what? Well, that's the book I'm probably most excited about picking up tomorrow because I heard about that a while ago. I'm excited to see if that's going to be any good. I'm annoyed at the title because I have my it's own a... work of fiction called Seven Swords, which I had to abandon the title because there's a Chinese kung fu film that's called seven swords they should have called and now it there's this and i'm like damn it i can't i can't reuse this title again they should have called they should have called it seven swords of swinging okay i'll excuse myself and seven seven swords is a swinging I, I would have called it seven swashbucklers but that might be too, too swashbuckling seven take a look at this <laughs> I like Here's that. a book. Like, does anyone care about Star Wars anymore? Remember when Star Wars used not, to be like the biggest thing in the world? Not the High Republic. Look, look at look at it. it it's, look at this uh, cover. It's Grogu. Oh, no, I don't want to look, take that away. Look. No. Look at you Yoda. Can't make me. Look at Yoda. No. <laughs> look. That's not Yoda. That's not. <laughs> look at Yoda. That's, that's not Yoda. That look, it's, it is. Look no, at him. Is. The Schwartz. The Schwartz is with him. <laughs> That is a very Mel Brooks. <laughs> Look at that face. This is terrible. That, that is Grogu, and that's uh, Medusa next to him with the hair. God, it's so that's bad. so dumb. It's so... Never mind the fact that Ryder is one of the racist ones on uh, on Twitter. It's so dumb, and it, you know, it's even worse. It's even worse human... that Disney can't even do all of its Star Wars in house. They have it's outsourced part of it. Is that like... one of the IDW? Ones? Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. But why is why does he not have like solid black eyes? Why does he have like like white but pupils? The Marvel ones, from what I hear, have somewhat been better, especially the Charles Soule written ones. Um, those have been a bit better. I haven't been reading any of the recent ones because uh, right now they have a massive. If there was any doubt that Star Wars was coming from Marvel Comics, they have a massive crossover event going on with Star Wars Comics Zach, right now. You got to get on that Cremarian. So, so what, before we get to the book real quick, because the alarm did go off, I do want to oh, uh, promote oh, Jupiter's right. legacy here. I, I know that they had the Netflix thing, and the Netflix show was canceled, and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I'm quite, quite frankly, uh, um, I'm not surprised. It, it was terrible adaptation. And if you have not read Jupiter's Legacy, do not let the show color your opinion one way or the other. Because it was almost nothing <laughs> like like the comic. Um, so I would highly recommend reading Jupiter's Legacy, the very first series, which they renumbered in the new trades. It's actually volume three. You gotta, don't read them out of order, um, in my opinion. Like, Anyways, but this is the new thing. It's not on my pull list simply for one reason. Because I have all the trades and I don't want to, I'm very anal, so I can't have like trades and floppies. So I'm going to get these in trades as too. Um, but this is something I'm extremely looking forward to because. A 56 Jup page book. Wow. Super's Legacy yeah. was, was. Is fantastic. that the second season for the show? The, that, the, the, the first that, that, season of the sequel. The first season of the show didn't even get to the third issue of the comic. <laughs> As I was saying, is that, is that a follow up? the show no the art the art definitely uh, i like the art on this way better than the original Hush your mouth don't be dissing Who is this? quietly tommy lee edwards i, I like this tommy lee edwards oh, guy goodness. tommy lee jones right you're canceled no. <laughs> <laughs> ash doesn't like that i don't like frank quietly art but, but those are look at captain harlock Space pirate Captain Harlock from the seventies animated. You're free. To... I, I heard about that. I heard about that. You're free to dislike Frank quietly and quiet. Ooh, I forgot about Vampire. <laughs> Car... Vampire Carmella come out next. I'm probably gonna pick up Fantastic Four. Oh my god! Three. Is Albedo coming back? What's Albedo? Albedo yeah. is an old school indie comic from the eighties. The first appearance of Usagi Ojimbo. Um. I'm uh, wow. Albedo color special. What? Oh, expanded retelling of the first issue. Interesting. Is lady? Yeah, Al, this was old up. school. This is what indie comics used to look like. <laughs> Does this have sex in it too? It no. looks like a furry. No, <laughs> but cartoon indie, animals. Cartoon indie animals comics were, used to be... They were very popular because you didn't have to know how to draw as well if you drew cartoon uh, okay. animals. Um, so. Yeah, you could get away drawing. We, we we back then we called it anthropomorphic, and that's what all the high school kids in, in my day were drawing because that was like the new crave. You know, Teenage Mutant Turtles really took over the world back then. Um, there's nothing really good on sale on Comicsology, so I'm just gonna blast through this. Um, I like to nothing on sale this week. No, well, there's I mean there's some stuff, but nothing noteworthy. Uh, there is, I mean, there is stuff there, but nothing that I want to go out of my way to recommend. Um, you can check for yourself. Um, and then we're going to get to God of Thunder, God Bomb Part 3. Bomb, 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 bomb. Oh, sorry. Need the parents. <laughs> Jimmy says, Star Wars is so good at Marvel, it makes all the other stars die from sadness. No, that's not why people are dying from sadness. It's, it's um, uh, let's see. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, is there any? I, have, I was not very active on the chat tonight. You guys, it's harder when you guys are very active, and also harder when I have guests uh, in the voice. But uh, how, do you, how do you have fourteen? Oh, not, sorry, you know it's on a thirteen. <laughs> Thanks. Fanta. I was gonna say, yeah, fourteen people. It's one third time. And like there's three people on panel. I was like, wow. It's probably bats. As soon as he's like, oh shit, he's gonna read Jason Aaron. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, no, that's what it is. He left to go get his own copy. He has. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um, he's in the chat. So you. All right. So tonight we're gonna be reading Thor: God of Thunder, God Bomb Part Three. This is, I believe, what is it? Part Five of my video series. 
um, stream we're doing. And if you're like, what the hell is this show all about that I'm in? Uh, it's a hodgepodge of a bunch of things. Uh, starts off with a bunch of talking and banter, as you just experienced. And then we eventually get into reading a comic book live on the air. It's supposed to be sort of like reading you a bedtime story. That was the original thing. Started off at the beginning of COVID when no one was doing anything. And this was just to keep my channel alive. And uh, I've just been doing it ever since. Uh, it's, it's just been going on and on. And um, so, disclaimer, I am not a professional voice actor. So, there you go. Number two, uh, I'm reading these books cold. I haven't read them before, so I'm bound to make some mistakes. And number three... I read it frame by frame, which just makes the challenge even more difficult. So just remember, you get what you pay for. Um, so you can. And your money, your money goes to getting him a blanket. So he's not reading; it's cold. You can feel free to complain <laughs> if you wish, but uh, uh, yeah. So uh, we're going to be reading three issues tonight um, because th this is an eleven issue series, apparently for some dumb reason. Um, <laughs> that is weird. Don't they normally go to, like, 12 or something? Like, why 11? Makes the OCD in me go crazy. Jason Aaron's daring to be different. No, it's it's honestly, it's because it was two five-issue story arcs with a one-issue interlude in between. Well, so Maybe it's 11 because it's 11 it was written in 2011. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's Marvel now. It's like, it's like the number 23. Everything can go to 11. <laughs> dare to be different. Um, anyways... So we get three Thors on the cover here, because, you know, three is better than one. And Three uh, granddaughters, too. Oh, yeah, three granddaughters. Uh, one for each of them. <laughs> oh. I'm out. Math is wonderful. I'm going to find some meat. <laughs> um, so that's it. We're going to read it. Um, I'll read it all the way through. We'll stop and talk a little bit. And Dragon Man says, let's do it live. <laughs> I don't know if he was doing that, but... That's my, that's a funny take. Have you guys seen the the Bill O'Reilly? Is that the Bill O'Reilly? I was about to we'll say, do it, yeah. We'll do it live. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> yeah. You're about uh, to enter a no spin zone. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jimmy says this book is so good. I now know what it's like to chew five gum. Or you could just chew five. Gum, <laughs> I don't know what the hell that what means. <laughs> You can know what it's like to chew five gum. I don't know what that means. Five gum. Five. Have you heard of that? It's that black label, uh, label gum, and it has like the blue or yeah. orange. It's, it's probably it's probably cheaper than this issue of Thor. Yes, but <laughs> no, but the hey, and it lasts. The entertainment lasts longer. <sighs> I just okay. I'm gonna be using that from now on. Whenever something's super good, it's like it's like five gum. All right. It's like Here. five guys in my mouth. Um, nothing's that good, Vankman. <laughs> okay, sorry. Here we go. No more comedy. This is serious Thor ishness. He and brought the go. hammer down on us. I'm sorry. That's it. I'm done. In his crusade against the gods of the universe. Gore, the god butcher, enslaved deities from across time and space and indentured them into the constructing a device designed to kill all of divinity. The God Bomb. The Thor of our present traveled to the end of time and joined the Thor of the future, King Thor, on a mystical longboat to defeat the god butcher once and for all. The young Thor of Viking Age escaped Gord's slavery in time to encounter his future selves and join their force. Now they prepare for battle. The hammers are about to fall. God Bomb, part three of five, Thunder in the Blood. Was that sufficiently dramatic? The Far Future. The black world of gore. Mm. Gore, watching me sleep again? Come to bed, dear, and I promise you a better view. Soon. I'm sorry I woke you. Is everything all right? 
I heard an explosion earlier and what sounded like thunder. Gods being gods. Nothing to worry about. Everything progresses as planned. Your bomb. It's almost finished then? Almost, yes. And once it is, once you've finally killed all the gods, you'll be free then, won't you? We all will. I have dreamed of that day for such a very long time, my love. But tell me, why do we never speak of what comes after? After? You know what comes after. I'd like to hear you say it. After the bomb, I will finally be ready to... To what, my love? And please don't say die. No. To live. Gore, is that... Grumble. Go back to sleep, my love, and know that when you next wake, it will be to a world transformed. We should have a plan. Follow my lead, the both of you, and try not to get us killed. That's our plan. Hit him with hammers until he breaks, that's my plan. Everything below us, the entire planet, it all appears to be made from Gore's weapon. We should keep the fight in the air for as long as possible. You forget. The boy has no Mjolnir. He cannot fly. And not to worry about me, old man. I'm the only Thor here who has already beaten the bastard twice. Wait, time out. How is he the only one who's beaten him twice if he's the youngest? Hasn't isn't these future Thors him? I'm confused. I think I think it's alternate timelines. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to that after. Thank you, Jason Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, good night. Continuing. You're also the only Thor who's been captured by him twice. We can't afford to be rash and reckless here. We must You should have brought more Thors. Bah! You sour old crones have forgotten what it means to be a god of the Vikings. Here, let me show you. And you idiot children have yet to learn what it means to be a king, let alone a failed one. For the glory of Asgard. Me own your old friend. Give me strength. Then struck Thor with the fury of a billion storms. The sky exploded with lightning and black gore. Thunder echoed through the depths of space. Thunder and the pounding of hammers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Why does Thor, the young Thor, have a two-handed, I guess it's just a regular two-handed hammer. Sorry, continuing. Thank you for this, Thunder Gods. It would have been such a shame to have ended all of divinity without one last chance to be a butcher. I have waited 900 years for this moment to feel the thunder in my blood once again. Oh, shit, I read this wrong. <laughs> Bad lettering. Who's talking? The cask of the finest ale to the god who stills that tongue. I have waited 900 years for this moment to feel the thunder in my blood once again. And do you? Let us see. <laughs> Moments later. Light years away. Funk. Such was the awesome might of an All Father unleashed that for the first time in millennia, the Butcher of Gods knew fear. Shh. 
Crash. It would appear Gore is throwing chunks of moon at us. My Mjolnir finds that amusing. How about yours? Can't you hear it laughing? Krakum. More power. I need more power. That means... More blood. Kill the slaves. Massacre all the gods. The true history of Gore's weapon had been lost to time, though there were many different stories and legends. Some say it was a blade forged by the Elder Gods and used in the time of creation to carve existence from the unbreakable stone of nothingness. Others said it was the darkness in all the gods' given form, and that whoever wielded it was merely an empty vessel for its murderous will. There were stories that it had slain billions upon billions, even before Gore, that it had raged through worlds like a wildfowl, that it had raged through worlds like a wildfire through dry stalks. That is power, that its power would continue to grow for all time until the day it finally blackened all of infinity. Perhaps on that day, we'll tell stories of this one, of the day Gore's black world became ringed with blood and the screaming of gods filled the cosmos entire, the day the lords of all the heavens were slaughtered like lambs. I hear screaming from worlds away. Gods are dying. Gore is killing his slaves. He knows he's in trouble, and the god blood fuels his power. I will show the bastard blood. Let me... <laughs> Oops. I feel them drowning. Feel the blackness flooding them. No Thor will survive this day. No gore will either. Ah, faster, you stupid shark. <laughs> Time out. Oh my God. <laughs> he's, awesome. he's riding a space shark. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, I couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> like, I know that there's flying sharks in Marvel space and stuff, but what? No, no, you, a... must, you must have missed the last episode then, because they he fights the space sharks in the last... Well, there are space whales. I'm thinking of the space sharks they had in like cosmic ghost rider all right hold on we gotta get back to the story oh my gosh. time in it looks like beast boy He's i said great. time in Shh. <laughs> <laughs> moving on no more chains no more of your black berserkers just you and me now gore and the hammer i'm going to kill you with thwack I'd tell you to pray to your gods, but I know you don't have any. Though you may pray to me if you like. Though, if you pray for a quick death, don't expect your prayer to be answered. Crack. Serpents. Always another damn serpent. We must be free of this mire. Gores must answer to the fury of our hammers. I am not the All-Father, boy. Sorry. Am I not the All-Father, boy? Am I not the way and the wrath and the wonder? Urgh. Go. Leave the Lord of Asgard to deal with this worm. As Mjolnir flew, Thor strained to hold fast. Asteroids shattered in his wake. Stars flickered. He knew he must not stop, no matter what he saw. Even if there were wounded, even if they were him. Come. I never get tired of killing Thors. With every swing of his mighty hammer, 
Thor felt his bones rattle, his fingers crack, his muscles tear, and yet he swung again, even harder than before. And again, and again. With every cut, he felt Gore's weapon creep inside him, burrowing deeper into his flesh. Broken blades became maggots eating him from the inside. But Thor made his mind as hard as the uru of his hammer, and he thundered on. Thor ignored the pain, the roar of his own screams, the shattering of worlds around him. Thor focused only on bludgeoning and ignored everything else. No, that's no empty moon. Boom. <sighs> Crack. Thus did the Norse god of thunder come to be worshipped on a distant. Sorry. Thus did the Norse god of thunder come to be worshipped on a scarred world in a distant corner of space. At last, I. Un oh, sorry. God, I'm just messing up left and right. At last, I understand you, little god. The old you, the king, he's always been fueled by regret. He thinks if he kills me, he can erase his own history of wretched failure. And the young one, the Viking god, he uses his arrogance and rage to mask his crippling shame. But you, you I could never quite figure out. Until now. You know I'm right. That's why you fight so hard. Why you try so desperately hard to seem noble. Because you see just how petty and useless your kind truly are. You know what I know. That gods have never created or cared for anything except themselves. The God who doubts. <laughs> I changed my mind. You're my favorite Thor. In the great black emptiness of space, the mighty Thor reached out his hammer and at last the black leviathan fell. And Thor looked upon his work, and knew it was just the beginning. Thor the father, lord of Asgard, Thor the king of kings. Young Thor had a hammer in his hand, and a viking cry of battle upon his lips. Beneath the rage he was smiling. Thor the son of Odin, the prince of Asgard, Thor the Bloody Redeemer. Thor the Avenger fought with the spirit of a multitude. Thor the Holy Hero, champion of the cosmos. Thor the Hammer of Heaven. The three Thors, the greatest of all the gods. Or so the story goes. You mean to tell me that someday I will be able to do that? After them, into the sun. Somewhere in the cosmos, star whales reached themselves, beached themselves on an asteroid and died. Hundreds of them for seemingly no reason at all. A dog was born with the face of a child screaming in terror. It did not live for long. A saintly woman died and found no one waiting for her on the other side. No white light to guide her. Nothing. The sacred waters of the well of Mimir turned red and bitter. The world tree bled at the roots. In Asgard, the statues of the kings began weeping, and on a backwards world an alien boy looked up at the morning sky.
and saw the sun turn black. Rumble. On the world of gore, thunder is heard. And then it began to rain. It rained blood. God blood. Thum, thum, thum. Then it rained hammers. And Thor's. And despair. Make ready the bomb. To be continued. Dun, dun, dun. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, this book is starting to rely heavily on the art. Not that I'm disliking the story at all, but I feel like it's kind of stretched out. It kind of reminds me. Kind of like a... Um, the, 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 the final Hobbit movie where it was just like one big battle and I was like okay this is cool it's, it's epic but do we really need the three hour fight <laughs> like would you say I felt like it jumped the shark dun 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 dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it, it's, you... it's, it's cool I'm enjoying it um, but I think if the art was not good it would feel Overly much. But well, why are the sharks green, though? That's because they're space sharks. Like beast boy. They're space they're sharks. Beast boy sharks. Uh, like cosmic sharks are, are green. But the but not, the, the star green. whales the star whales just look like normal whales. They look like a giant you know uh, whale. Weird. Maybe they're like the like comets. You know how they glow green when they enter, enter the atmosphere. So maybe the shark was uh, entering the atmosphere and becoming that color. Nah. Melissa says there's only one Thor it's not a title it's his name there's only one Thor I it's agree Jane Foster I... <laughs> <laughs> I swear if Jane Foster comes out at the last minute and it's like you forgot a Thor and hits Thor <laughs> oh dude that would just be <laughs> epic at the end if she all the all these three Thors are dead, and it's like looks like the villain is one. And then see, Jane it takes Foster, a woman. Finally, at the end, like Jane Foster's like, "There's still a Thor left." Well, well my <laughs> thought, my thought is right here. We saw everyone die, but we did not see the bodies of his granddaughters. That's true. We have not yet. So they're gonna save the day. We don't know yet. There's still two more issues. Oh my god! You could have made Marvel. <laughs> well, this is this is Marvel a decade ago. This is is not... one of his granddaughters, because uh, I know in like they had the next Avengers, they had a like Thor had a daughter or granddaughter. Well, it's, it's not, no, it's not. It's not Toron. No, it's not Toron. Okay, no, I couldn't remember. Uh, there's also Bruid, but that was from Captain Marvel, I think, currently. But the the one that's in here are the I think name is Frigga or Frigga. Frigga, based ba uh, named after her her, uh, her grandmother. Oh, okay. Marania says decent art. Story is feeling taffy stretch to fit the trade paperback. Dude, that first when they showed the darkness on the ground, like you know, in a planet, it looked like it was colored by crayon. No. Or like or colored colored pencil. It does have a little bit of a colored pencil feel. I don't mind that though. I mean that's just a stylist choice of the coloring. Uh but you remember Assad Rabik, that's his whole thing, is he's kind of like a painted illustrator. Yeah. I'm very much enjoying the art. So I agree with what Marani said. It is feeling stretched out, but because the art is so gorgeous, like I'm just like, okay, give me more. If this was weak art, like modern day Marvel, I'd just be like, get this shit over with already, you know? Like, like a uh, like a uh, Jimmy Palmiotti art. I like Jimmy Palmiotti art. He wouldn't fit Thor, but like, like Invisible uh, or Red Sonia right now. No, I'm just uh, like, I'm just talking just about, no, like, look at the art on that new Spider-Man book, the darkness one, the shadow. Oh, that You're one, yeah. Like, oh, my God. Like, I can't <laughs> even. Marania says, space sharks got hit with gamma radiation. They will eventually be Hulk sharks. <laughs> uh, Jimmy says, that Jane Foster Thor theory actually happened in the War of the Realms. The three Thors were killing it, 
And then she came in. Oh, my God. Of course. Uh, oh God. <laughs> well, at least it's not happening here. Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus. It's, it's building up. But... Kind of glad I skipped out on War of the Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, um, I, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I am. It's it's fun. It's a it's a beatdown story, right? It's, it's This is kind of what you want i think in a thor book sometimes is thor just fucking bashing like something that can fight back even harder yeah you also don't want like him overpowered like you do with superman i like unless i like when the actual hero has to struggle a little bit but if it's doing for 11 issues where he can't even get a lick in that's yeah, when i get it that's one of the problems that uh that donny kate's kind of suffered in the beginning of his run he's like we already had like godly King Thor, but Jason Aaron left him at, and then it's like, oh, now you get the power cosmic. <laughs> it's like, oh, is... and, then, yeah, and then he just killed uh, Galactus in the fifth issue. He's like, meh, meh, eh, I'm good. Let's go have some mead now. I like, didn't, what's... I didn't necessarily mind that, but I did kind of mind that it was like, oh, the thing that killed the previous universe before the Marvel universe. I get why you had to power up Thor, but it's like yeah. that was it. That that you didn't. Shouldn't there, you just, oh, you beat it? Okay. <laughs> I guess he didn't really beat it, but. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it, it was a still fun story. Uh, I shouldn't, I'm not trying to demean the Kate's Thor. I think he's doing good with what he has to work. I'm, 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 I'm hopeful because it feels like he's repairing all the damage. So hopefully he can get all that done and then we can go into some good but stories. I want to that... see, I want to see him tie into his Thanos wins type stuff. Get into that cosmic shit. I reading Simonson, I love the North mythology he puts into the to the stories. So yes. I mean so yes. we need more of that. If anybody's doing Thor, remember he's a Norse god. Not a superhero. He's a Norse god. So it means North mythology. Yeah, but that requires research. You and I like and I'll say this modern writers don't research stuff. Thor, the younger Thor, without with you know, the first couple pages was just about him, you know, you know, just you know, without being, you know, Evan Milner. It was kind of interesting because I, I really don't see that. We don't see Thor without his hammer and the younger version of himself. But then again, I haven't read all Walt Simon since. I don't know if they've done that before or not. You do kind of see young Thor before he gets Melnir. You do see that if you read the first or I think it's the first two volumes maybe of Uncanny Avengers. Uh, because what, before he gets Melnir, he has the god-killing axe Yon, Yonborn, I think. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm born. It, and that plays a pretty significant role with uh, Apocalypse and the, the Apocalypse Twins. So you do see a little bit of that in Uncanny Avengers. Huh. Okay, At I'll least the, fir the first volume or two. I'll uh, look it up. Yeah, it's it's a good run. I recommend it. It's uh, Rick Remender. I know there's some folks that, that have issue with X-Men and Avengers but, being combined, but I really dug it. I thought it was a cool story. Let's get into this. We got this book and another book. Yeah, we gotta get to that. But, but Jimmy's like another reason the Donny Keats Thor isn't as good as Aaron's. Yeah, Aaron has one. Jason good Aaron, thing. outside of this God of Thunder, which I'm legitimately having some fun with. Outside of this, though, Jason Aaron has writ wrote written written the worst Thor I've ever read. It, he he absolutely ruined the character, and Donny Cates' Thor picks up. At the peak, when Jason Aaron's like, "Okay, I'm washing my hands with the character. I fucked him up. He, he's like all ruined. Here you go." Um, so, um, let's fix what, the eye. Let's give his arm back. <laughs> it's what, like, yeah, what Kate's has to work with is like, oh, okay. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I absolutely, I that, that'd be like Walt Simonson like, coming in, really, you know, and be like, "What the hell did you do to my character? Let's restore what, everything." One <laughs> good, one good story from Aaron versus like six good stories from Kate's. Well, this is the beginning, right? I think this is towards well, yeah, the beginning of Aaron's run. Right at, yeah, I think it's right at the beginning, but then it all goes downhill, right? I guess. I guess. I mean, later on, like he said, like he said, obviously he said like Jane comes in War of the Realms and basically like just says, you know what? I'm better than all the guys. You guys failed. He's a woman to clean this mess up. Right. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm just comparing what I've read of Aaron's writing and like Avengers and stuff, and comparing it to anything I've read Kate's write. It, like, it's no but. Concept. I would have had no problem with that if it wasn't Jane Thor. If it would have been like the uh, Brunhilda, you know, Shield Maiden, helping out. There's get no Thor, other. Get Thor the rest. No, this is where you I know? go back to 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 Melissa. There's no other Thor. 
There's only Thor. And Aaron was yeah. stupid to try to propose otherwise. This story I'm okay with because all They're three all of these are Thor. They're just from different yeah. times. They're, it's not like there's, I'm Thor because of this. and It's not like I'm Eric Masterson Thor. Or I'm Donald Blake Thor. It's not like that. It's These are all Thor, son of Odin, different times. You can do that. It's fine. Um, and if they would have done a story with Jane, well, Jane should have never been able to pick up the hammer in the first place. J Aaron Foster demonstrated a complete non-understanding of the Jane Foster character. He just turned her into an aggressive bitch, which is absolutely like a polar opposite practically of who Jane Foster was. It was just an excuse to be like, let's make Thor a woman. Okay. Um, in fact, when Thor, when she was originally picked up the hammer, no one even knew it was her because you couldn't guess that that was Jane Foster. She kept her mask on. And then it's like, it was a big reveal later. It's like, ta-da, it's Jane. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Jane's a you're pacifist. Right, Jimmy. You're right, Jamie. I haven't read all of Jason's run, but you're telling me that he uh, that Jane had to come in and rescue the three other Thors because they were not able to defeat a villain a villain in War Realms, so they had to be rescued by a woman. Three okay. freaking Thors! You're telling me that you know, not even one Thor could do the job, but a but a woman who took his name and his powers because. Had to make Thor unworthy. That was Jason Aaron. A frail pacifist woman, by the way. Oh, who, my who God. Abhors, who, abhor, who, is a, who is a nurse because she abhors violence. <laughs> um, she's she's like actually... the yin-yang of Thor. Like That was what makes her a good character in the Thor universe is because where Thor is this violent brute who deals with everything with violence, it's, she's like the polar it's... opposite. She's like, no, like you don't, don't fight, you know, and... and it helped balance him out, but then they got rid of her as a kind of a love interest. And she kind of went the Donald Blake route and then they bring her back and it's like, let's totally reinvent her. Like, but with no real reasoning, she just There's, wasn't the same character anymore. I, I don't, the, the reason why she picks up the Thor or the hammer is relevant. She never should have picked it up. If it did, it would have been like a panel. And then here you go. Thor, here's your hammer back. Like Captain America did an end game. You know, there's no reason for her to even pick it up. And then keep it. She should have never been able to pick it up, first of all. But let's just entertain that, that say that she could have for some dumb reason. She should have gone the Beta Ray Bill route and just had her yep. own identity. Yep. Right? Yeah. And she just, I am I am Jane with the power of Thor. Whatever. Fine. That I, I still think it would be dumb because it's not Jane Foster. And you're right. It could have been Brunhilde. It could have been yeah. someone else. But, Sif? Sif, but you know, actually is worthy? I would have. I would have liked. To oh see my it. gosh, Balder! Balder doesn't get enough love these days. Well, but yeah, see, but none of those should be worth. See, that's the thing. You, it used to be like no one picked up Thor's hammer except Captain America. Almost does one time, and you're like, oh my god! And they captured that in the right. MCU, and now it's like in the last twenty years, like pretty much everyone's wielded Thor's hammer at some point. You're just like, is what is the worthiness? Like, is it just random? Like, like a lottery? Oh, today you're worthy. <laughs> It's like you get the hammer. Well, I never said that I read all of Jason's run either. I'm not crapping on his run. I'm just saying what I have read from Jason Aaron versus what I have read from Donna Cates. It's one good story from Aaron and half a dozen good stories from Cates. I'm not crapping over all of Aaron's stuff. Just going off of what I've read of his. And, and I Jimmy... have read. I have read uh, the first six or eight issues of his Jane Foster Thor. I don't. Yeah. I'm not just crap because of actually took his name. The fact is, she he she became Thor. Thor was moping for like all the homie, homie, homie for a year. Yeah, it's not. It's or, not like I said. It's not just taking his name, which is stupid. By the way, the fact that you're the, the fact that you're defending a stupid idea that is stupid. But also, it's because you had to diminish Thor to do it. So what they did for the, her character to make this quote unquote great story is build it on the back of this other character who that they didn't then shamed. That's not yeah, good writing. Called, they called him unworthy Thor for like the next several years. Yeah. Unworthy. You should have been, a, like, Thor didn't need that. Thor didn't need to be propped up on, on Jane's shoulders. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, that's not fair, good writing. To be fair. I didn't like the idea of beta Ray bill even having a hammer. I thought that was dumb. You know, and like, why are we? You should be only be Thor. Keep it the Norse mythology. There shouldn't be no freaking horses with a hammer 
that are falling and that they're having a thing going on with Sith. That was Walt Simonson. I, I blame him for that. And that was I thought that was dumb. But like, for those who love Vader Bill, I'm glad you're happy. But I thought that I always thought that was like, wow, we have Thor. We don't need anybody else no, having their Walt own. Walt Simonson hammer. invented a character Ugh. invented a character who was worthy of the hammer. And at the time Thor wasn't worthy of the hammer. Exactly. And so, I'm just, I'm just and so he told he told like a I believe it was like a four issue story. It was like a really short story. Yeah. And it was just a story, not really to prop up Bill. It was more of a story to like have Thor learn a lesson and go, and like earn his worthiness back. Because after that Beta Ray Bill story, Thor's better. Like Beta Ray Bill was a tool. It just so happened that Beta Ray Bill became this popular, loved character by fans. That was never the intention. Yeah, they were never trying to replace Thor with him. He was a tool. All right. Anyways, we got to get back in the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Take two. Act, Continue. Act two. The God Bomb, part four of five. To the last god. All thunder fell silent. Across the skies of creation, as King Thor was nailed to a comet and sent roaring through space, On the world of the slaughtered god slaves, the ground opened like a great black maw, and Thor the Avenger fell. Mjolnirs lay encased in a cage of god flesh, unable to fly to their master's hands. And young Thor found himself too spent to even muster a curse. As the countdown began, Gore, please tell me you're unharmed, my love. I saw those gods attack you, and then there were great lights in the sky, and the world itself trembled, and all the slaves were screaming, and go back inside. It will all be over soon. It's time, then, at last, for the bomb? Yes, for the God Bomb. I have waited for this day, for those words, for so many years, my love. I've never doubted that you would see us through, that your strength and devotion would save not only our family, but all of the families of man. You have suffered so much, my love, I know. You have endured horrors beyond imagining for so very long, yet you have never wavered in your calling. Never have you lost faith in what is just and right, and never have I lost faith in you. You are the only being I have ever known who is worthy of worship. You are the brightest star in all the heavens. You, Gore, my lover, my savior, you are my God. What did you say? I said, dear that you, my sweet, loving gore, are my... I am no one's god. Father? Father, is it true? Is it time to trigger the bomb? It... It is indeed. Where's Mother? She said she was coming to meet you. She should be here to see this. Look for her in the towers, boy. But don't expect me to wait. I have too many gods to kill. Yes, Father. And of course we must make sure we kill them all. If I could just reach one of those damn hammers. And exactly what would that do, Frigg? What makes you think you'd fare any better against Gore than all those Thors did? 
Better to die with a hammer in my hand, Ellie, than stuck in this damn web like some helpless fly. You should both save your energy. Save our energy? Gorf's world runs bled with riv runs red with rivers of blood. Thousands of gods lie slaughtered. Three Thors have fallen, and at any moment now a god bomb will explode and wipe us out of existence. For what exactly should I be saving my energy, dear sister Atli? For biting off your tongue and swallowing it. Better to choke myself to death than give that bastard, th bastard gore the satisfaction in killing me. I'd rather reach a damn hammer. We'd all reach a hammer, Frigg, but what good is a hammer anyway? Against a bomb. Look at it. Beautiful, isn't it? It was designed by a god named Shadrach of the Diamond Moons of Ogogo, the god of bombs and fireballs. He enjoyed casting them into space so he and his friends could watch the stars explode. After just one afternoon of watching his friends explode, he begged me to let him build this. It took 900 years and an army of god slaves to bring Shadrach's designs to life. It was built around the heart of an elder god and infused with the chronomancy of the Time Lords of Chronux. And once I trigger it, with this, it will explode through time, killing every god who ever lived, or ever will. Amen. Wham! A few more drops in the pool of forevers. Yes, I believe that's all we'll need. Bleed for me now, god of thunder. Bleed for my blessed bomb. Pitu. Oh no. We'll need more blood than that. Meanwhile, miles below. You'll never make it in time. Gore is triggering the bomb as we speak. You'll be dead before you ever reach the surface. You and every god you've ever known. Run away, boy. Whatever happens next, this is no place for the likes of you. I cannot leave. I am what my father has made me. But the question now is, what is my father? Weapons. There are weapons in the rock. Must be the weapons of the gods Gore enslaved. He was a good man once, my father. A simple man. A family man. A loving man who suffered unfairly. But I wonder what would that man say if he could see what he's become in the eon since. Boy, leave now. Take whatever family you have and... My mother is dead. She always dreamed about life after the bomb, about a world without gods for my father to butcher, about us free to be a family, but there was never going to be a life for us after the bomb. I always knew that, even before my father killed her, just as he killed the man he once was. Gore is dead, and in his place now stands something I've been raised to my life to despise. Grr. I don't know how to pray, but I will pray to you, God of Thunder. I pray that you kill my father. Rumble. This must be it. I love you with all my heart, my sisters. May we meet again in Valhalla. Kiss my ass, guardian ass, Gore, you son of a... What the? We're not dead? Gah, 
biting your tongue hurts like hell. Look, weapons. Arm yourselves. This day we're slaves no more. Today we die like gods. Ugh, stupid hammer. Must be broken. Won't budge. Hey! Kroom. With your heart, Thor of Asgard, I will baptize this holy machine. Grrr. If you want it that badly, I'll gladly trade my heart for your eye. Kaboom. The last pathetic whimper of the gods. You're too late. You're all too damn late. That's one eye down. Now to take the rest. Yarnbjorn? Hey, get your own axe. Sorry, girl, but this axe and I have unfinished business. What kind of Thor doesn't have his own hammer? The kind who can do this. For a boom. Now those are Thor's. Cut them down. Rage till the end. Fight to the very last god. Shrunk. Rage at your dimming all you like, ye godlings. At last begins the era of man. The bomb is coming to life. Get to the bomb. Boom. Too late, Thors. Behold your doom. Arr. He's triggered the bomb. What do we do? How do we stop it? Your Thor. You hit it with hammers. Aye, that I can do. Boom. The god bomb seized with power. The roaring of Mjolnir's shook the stars. Boom. Thor fought to choke down fear, but it bubbled up like bile. Boom. And Gore's words burrowed deep into his marrow. Boom. Ha ha ha. What if they really are better off without us? Thor wondered in fear. Thum! Even as he swung his hammers. What if a godless age is what they deserve? Thum! What if Gore isn't a madman at all? Gods help us. What if he's... Wah, boom! Boom! To be continued. What if he's what? What could he be? What if he's born with it? What if it's Maybelline? I was going to say, <laughs> maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I can already see the unworthy thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a... Uh. Again, this is like a cool excuse to have Thor fighting some badass, but without the art, I don't know. Like I'm just, it's kind of fun to see Asadra Beak have excuses to f show Thor fighting. Um, I was scared though. I thought the girls were like, the hammer comes to me. And I'm like, man, she can't use it. I was like, Oh, thank goodness. 
the, the, the conflict though like one of the one of the weaknesses i'm seeing in the like the conflict doesn't ever really seem to be overcome by thor like right like it just things happen like oh you're saved by this boy like thor's really never done anything except just swing hammers I mean, he's he's re, he's refused he's refused to give up, but he hasn't actually accomplished anything. It's just sort of him being there, and things just sort of happening for him. Um, he's Thor. What does Thor do? He swings his hammer. <laughs> Dominic, ha, you, stop! Hammer time. <laughs> which is pretty cool. I mean, I just I don't know I. I'm not seeing like he's not outsmarting Gore. He's not tricking well, him. That's, that's the thing is, is, he, is Thor only good for just swinging his hammer and that's it? He's not smart. He can't like he's not a tactician. Well, no, that's always been Captain America or Iron Man. Thor is like I, but the, he, but he, the warrior. He's, he's a always... warrior, but he's also been in so many battles. You think he would have like plans? You, you know, I've done this before. Yeah, Thor's not this. a Thor's not an oaf, as contrary no, to oaf. modern Marvel would have you believe. Like, yeah. He's, he's not an oaf, but he's also he's not like the Batman of the of the Justice League. He's he's like you know. No, he's, he's certainly not Batman, he's but the, he's he's the tank. He's the yes. tank. Yes. No, but I mean, he in his own books, Thor's smart. You know, and often like he's remember his greatest adversary is his brother Loki. Yep. And Loki is one of the most clever there is. So Thor. Even though he maybe can't keep up with Loki, the fact that he's had to like at least contest with him has made Thor, you know, pretty clever in his own right. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on the book, but it just well, does. It just sort of does feel like everything's on auto, like on autopilot. Like it's just things are happening, and I don't feel like Thor is really making a difference. He's just there he's a, for the yeah, ride. Yeah, uh, he does all his power for like you know hammer blows, and they just don't have no effect. Well, he's having some effect, right? But you know, uh, do you know what I'm saying? Like, if it wasn't for the yeah. interference of other people, yeah. like it Thor, three, Thor hasn't made a difference. And it's weird because you have three Thors. So I would it think takes three the, Thors to become a god butcher. That's it's that's just weird. It's no, like, that's that's cool. I think that makes the god butcher feel tougher. But I just wish like you would see that more. Like, I wish you would be like, oh my God, if, if Thor's here, he's about to meet his, his demise, but yet other Thor comes in and does something smart. Like, you're like, oh, cool. But yet it's just the three of them getting their ass whooped and being saved by other people. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's just... Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. What's, I get what you're what's the point of having three of them if they're just all three of them, you know, face planting into a wall? You know, Stark would have been there. Stark would have tuned his, uh, you know, his gauntlets to the frequency and just, you know, channeled it back at uh, Gore and killed him. I mean, it was a cool scene. I did like the cool scene when the older <laughs> Thor, the uh, King Thor, gives the other Thor's hammer. And I was like, oh, that's kind of. We know, I've, oh. I've, I've never seen that before. Where my prediction, though, is, my prediction though, with his Gore, like he wants to destroy all the gods. But the problem is that he destroys all time. So he just wants to, he wants to do a murder suicide. Here's the thing, too. I mean, obviously, I I don't know. Maybe this would have ruined it or messed with the story. This is obviously a threat to all gods in the Marvel Universe. Where's Hercules? Where's, where's Loki? Or or Loki? <laughs> like, there's other gods and demigods that are. No, they're all dead. Way. Hercules is dead at this point. Like, well, Hercules across... isn't a god. Hercules he, is a demigod. No, he's, he's a, a demigod. He's a hero, he's a... according to, in Greek myth. He's not a god. He's a hero. Okay. Well, this, in, um, Marvel, okay. in the Marvel universe, I don't know. Because Marvel, right. Marvel, Marvel might have had different things. But Loki is a god, yeah. but we already know the narrative has told us Thor is the last Asgardian. So every other Asgardian is dead. So that would include Loki. But, yeah, I mean, like, the, you know, Zeus. Yeah. 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 But, well, like I said, you I'll, said if this... I'm if gonna assume really, that Zeus is dead. Like it would be silly. This book, if you brought in Zeus like, to save Thor, like that would murk things up even worse. Right? I'm yeah, the god probably. thunder. I'm the god. 
<laughs> That'd be funny. What are you talking about? I would I, that, like I said, though, that would probably mark things up a little well, bit. My thing is, if the... they did this as an event thing, of course Loki would have his own tie-in. So. Oh yeah, Loki would, Mephisto would, Hercules would. They all would. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy's oh. saying the same thing. It's a Thor event. However, Jimmy, it is a fair criticism because this is not. It is a Thor event, but it, it, the story is written so that it affects all the gods in the Marvel universe. So yeah. it is fair to ask the questions because there are gods that we know about, such as, well, we'll assume Hercules is a Marvel guy, Thor, oh, this, or sorry, well, Zeus. Well, because like they, they did have an event called the Chaos War, which was a supernatural god war in Marvel that I think it was in Hercules's comic that it started, but it was an event. So it did spread and affect all these other supernatural cosmic, uh, you know, Marvel personalities. So, I don't know. That's the other. I was thinking of that when I'm just thinking like this guy's uh, this this whole the whole gore thing. He's like, and all the time, a man. I'm thinking, you're not a man. You're a freaking alien. Yeah, is, you know that is a good point. Um, Dragon yeah. Mass, He says Loki can be alive because he's an ice giant, not an Asgardian. Oh and... well, but guess what? They're old gods, though. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Mar- that's one of the things that Marvel changed. Loki, like, Loki yeah. is a god. He's if, if I remember my mythology correctly, he's half Frost Giant. And half Odin's blood. And, and half Odin's blood. So uh, he's a, he's, so he is a god. Yeah. He he walks both lines. In the MCU, they, they him. made him just well, Ice yeah, Giant. Just adopted, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know how it is in the comics. Um, I'm not that up to speed. I, I forget. I'm if just Oak... confused. How is he, how is he, if he's a giant, why does he look human form? If he's adopted by Zeus, that's it. It's not, it's not like Zeus being the frost giant. Or not sorry, Zeus, I mean not Odin. So that was one of the two in the MCU. I was like, well, how does he look human then? Maybe he's not half Odin and half. I'll have to go back and look in the, not just MCU, but the actual comics to see what the reason is. Uh, well, I think the MCU just didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just okay. like, it's okay. uh, here we go. Um, yeah. Because look at the frost giants, they're huge. They're not. They don't look human. They look. And I read this picture. I've seen the frost giants. They're giant, tall ice monsters. So if Loki to be a son of one. He was a baby. He was blue, but now sort of now he's human form. So maybe it's just weird to me. I, like I wonder did uh what's his name um the father. I forget what his name was. The old time ruler or not? Okay. Melissa did says. He, uh, Melissa says that Hercules is a god in the Greek mythology because his dad is Zeus. I don't think in the mythology that you became a god just because you had half blood. I could be wrong. I'm not an expert on this, but I do believe because Zeus was a dude who would go around the planet being with lots of women. (laughs) It's just like (laughs) he had lots of human sons, you know, and they were all like the Greek heroes like Perseus um, was one. Yep. And they had special abilities because of his god power, like Hercules obviously had strength, but he was still immortal. Yeah, they, yeah, not they, not they, a god. They, they're they always called them refer to them as demi gods because they weren't full gods, but they had the blood of Zeus going through their veins. Well, I think demi god is a a modern so thing down. that we well yeah that, that Dungeons and Dragons players say because well, there was a book called Deities and Demigods. And I, I know, but it, it makes more sense because he's like a water. It'd be like a watered down god. You're not the full thing. You're getting the watered down version. No, he was so a hero. He was the Greek well, mythos. No, I, Greek mythos is the ancestor to like comics, like the the idea of like super beings, oh. like Superman and stuff. Would you say Superman's a god? Superman is a human. No, he's not. He's, human. Human. he's, he's, alien. he's alien. He's an alien. alien that because in a certain environment. He has godlike powers, but he's not a god. Right. Same thing with that's what the Greek heroes were like. They had yeah. powers, but they weren't gods. They were they were mortals. But like I said, like the way they've done it now is just like the Zeus just went with so it's not good boots with a bunch of more women disappearing. No, no, Which that's not was... the way they have it now. That's the way that it was. Yeah. <laughs> that's that, I mean like you, there's by the way, there's a good movie out there if you guys have never seen it, called I... Immortals. Um, yeah, which has, is uh, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill's in it, right? He plays Perseus, and 
I love this movie. It's not a perfect movie, but man, it's got it's, a really nice uh, style to it. It's got a really Here cool a- style. I love the director, uh, Tarsum something or other. He's an Indian guy. He's directed a f- few different movies I like, but Immortals, and it's cool because it's about the story of Perseus um, versus sure was, was- is it Herod? I forget which which evil guy, but the gods do interfere. There's like a scene where the gods kind of do come in and man when they when the gods appear they feel like gods you're like oh shit they're they're huge they're like huge yeah and it's just the yeah because zeus is like the main thing it's just i love the way that they made this like separate like it it, it's just really well done i want to see this guy do a superhero movie you like the the sam worthington perseus wrath of titans and clash of titans reboot no I, I it's a personal I, favorite I, of mine. I, I, like I liked them. I liked them when I was younger a lot. Like we went to go see Clash of the Titans in 3D, uh, with the Kraken and everything. And I liked I liked Liam Neeson and Ray Fiennes as Zeus and Hades. Yes, they, they did really good in those roles. But I've just never been a big Sam Worthington. Fan. Well, I don't know what Bill Nye was in there. Is Bill Nye uh, was in there. Gemma yep. Arterton was in there. She's the main reason I saw the movie. Uh, Rosamund Pike. Nope. No, no, no. She was Rosamund Pike. No, 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 no. But you had Danny Houston in there too, as well. You get a yeah. nice cast. Yeah. Mads, Mads Mickelson, I think, uh, oh, was in there. They had a lot of a lot of people in that in that movie. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, we got to get on to part three. James right. Frank was in the sequel. We are on Thor, the God of Thunder, God Bomb conclusion. It's a pretty cool cover. Thor with two hammers. I like it. God Bomb, part five of five, The Last Prayer. Now, Omnipotent City, Nexus of all the gods. How much time do we have? You don't understand. There's no time. The bomb runs on time. It runs through time. It will kill us all no matter when we are. How will we know when it's happening? With any luck, we won't. Tell me, Shadrach, are you capable of saying anything that doesn't make me want to thrash you? Open the doors. The Lord Librarian demands an audience with the Parliament of the Pantheons. We have a bomb threat. The bomb will ripple backward through time, exploding through every second. Gore's black weapon will kill us all, every last god, all at... I didn't think it would hurt so much. Boom! The far future. The world of the god bomb. Ah, uh, ah! Oh wait, that's Thor. Urgh, I made the wrong sound. Sorry. Time out. Time back in. You're dying, and you know it, don't you, King Thor? Dying over every second of your life all at once. You and trillions more just like you. I do hope it hurts. Inside the heart of the god bomb, time began to tar. Eternity echoed with wailing and the gnashing of teeth, with the dying of the gods. If he'd been a lesser god... Thor might have accepted that Gore had won, and more so, that Gore deserved to win. That gods were cruel and jealous creatures, that it was time for their age to pass. But this was no lesser god. This was the god of roaring thunder and raging storms, and even if he had been the last god left alive in all the universe, he still would have been god enough. 
What is he doing? Dying like a god. All through time, gods were dying. Every god who had ever been born, or ever would be. There was no final battle for them to fight. No enemies standing over them. No warning even. They merely fell to their knees, choking on blackness, their flesh falling apart before their eyes. Some knew why it was happening. Most did not. But in their final cloudy moments, they all shared a common vision. A vision of one God with a mighty hammer in each hand, fighting at the heart of a bomb to save them all. And for one moment, that stretched across time. Every God in all the universe closed their eyes and prayed to Thor. He's absorbing it. He's taking in the blast into himself. That's not possible. Then let us watch the impossible together. Thor, hear my prayer. The present day, the wild space where Asgard once dwelled, where a father prays to his son. Hear the prayer of Odin. Do not fall, my son. Be the savior of us all. Be the god of gods. Holy hell, it just stopped. I can't believe it. We're alive. Yes, but so is he. No. No. He should all be dead. Black berserkers, kill them. Where are my black berserkers? Where are my towers? Where's my weapon? It's a pretty dope pick. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's not your weapon anymore. It laughs at you, Gore. Its name is All Black, the Necrosword. The Slicer of Worlds. The Annihila Blade. And it was meant to be wielded by a god. But you were right about one thing. No, give it back. It was also meant to kill them. Krakum! Damn. Damn you all. Damn all the gods. You... You don't deserve this victory. And you know it. All you've ever brought this universe is misery. Gods didn't create mankind. But someday, if they're not stopped, they will end it. Mark my words. Was it a god who killed my mother? My... Son, or was it you? Or are the two one and the same now, Father? Behold, Gore, God of hypocrisy. Son, 
please. No, I can't lose you too. They did this. You have to see that. It's the gods who have ruined creation. We'll all be better off without them. You can't blame the gods anymore, Gore. It wasn't a god who betrayed you. It was only ever yourself. No, please, don't leave me alone. The boy just melted into a stone dagger. Is this Gore's work? There never was a boy. There was only ever the weapon and the things Gore made from it. But it was the son who helped us defeat the father. No. It was the lonely little man who helped you defeat the butcher. <laughs> Slunk. I had had enough of that. Thus endeth the tale of the God Butcher. Shall we drink mead and think of the ways to defile his ashes? <laughs> the weapon is still inside you. Hurry, you must purge yourself. Too late. Just make certain that you prove him wrong. Thus died Thor. For the ninth time that could be remembered. Three days later, he rose again. Oh, sh time out. Th that is unnecessary. <laughs> what the fuck, Jason Aaron? Right? Continue. <laughs> they just can't resist. They just... <sighs> All right, continuing. Asgard of the far future. Seat of King Thor. Ugh. Father? I had the strangest dream. There were... There were three of me. It appears dying hasn't made him any smarter, has it? No, but I bet it has made him thirsty. Did you know there's a whole hidden room filled with ale? Or at least there used to be. What's happened? Oh, sorry, it's Thor. What's happened? The God Butcher. Dead. Turned to ash. And his weapon, the Necrosword? Left where it fell. We dare not touch it. I would have touched it, but his majesty here threw the entire planet into a black hole. And then he brought you back from the dead. The Th Thor Force? Aye. Burned out the last of the gore sickness inside you. I figured it was in my best interest. Would you like to see that for you for which you died? Asgard is alive again with gods from all over the cosmos. Wait, why is Asgard alive with gods from all over the cosmos? Oh, never mind. Continuing. The survivors of Gore's minds? Yes. Many have already returned to their home worlds, but some have been slaves for so long they could no longer remember from whence they came. So they will have a home here if they wish it, or I will find them new worlds where gods are needed. Worlds where gods are needed. I still can't believe I grew up to be the All-Father, Though by the looks of this ragged place, I do a fairly terrible job at it. You will prove yourself a great many things in the years to come, boy. 
You'll fail. You'll watch your loved ones die. And worst of all, you'll never come anywhere close to the one thing you've always wanted most. Yes, I will. I see you two carrying those hammers around. That means... I'm not talking about the hammer. You'll never be the son he wants you to be. No? Apparently I grow up to be every bit the troll's arse my father is. I believe I've had enough of this wretched future. The ale here is old and bitter anyway, just like the Thor's. You were unnecessarily harsh to the boy. Perhaps I wasn't speaking to the boy. I owe you a great debt, Thor of the Avengers, for reminding me what it means to command the thunder. But I still cannot look at you without a pain in my gullet, without seeing the eons of struggle and failure that lie between us. Be a better Thor than I was. And kill your bastard brother first chance you get. And you go be a king again, old man. And live to prove Gore wrong. But what if he wasn't wrong? Then we have even more work to do. Speaking of which, I think I know a world that could use some new gods. And so... Old King Thor, with his all-father magic, sent the other Thors back to their own times. Thor! Lord Thor has returned to us at last! Yes, but I cannot stay long. We've just brewed a fresh barrel of mead, my lord. Hmm, perhaps I could stay for a moment. They knew that given the nature of the time travel involved, their memories of recent events would soon begin to fade. There were some memories they looked forward to forgetting, and others they hoped to cling to forever. The Thors would not remember having met themselves, and chances were they would never meet again in such a way. Instead, they returned to their own separate worlds and lives their own ambitions, their own fears, their own callings, and also their one common destiny, to be the greatest god who ever lived. In the end, they would remember only that the gods had fought and died, that some victories were won, while others remained elusive. You moved! I know you moved, I felt it! That a king was restored to his throne, and that a prayer was finally answered. Thor? Little girdle of Indigar, I said I would return to you, and I have. You prayed to me because your world had no gods. That is one prayer, I assure you. You need never pray again. Thus did a world without gods become a world with very many. All thanks to a little girl's prayer and a madman's murder spree and of course to a god of thunder and his mighty hammer a god whose story may have been as old as time but whose adventures and perils had only just begun next issue thor returns to midgard And so endeth Thor the God Butcher. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's the wrong music. Sorry. Wakey, wakey. 
And if you head at 2.19 a.m. Central and you reach this far, you won. <laughs> Questionably. <sighs> well, um, what'd you think? I did my best reading of it if I could. I could tell. I tried. At first, when you, when you first went over to the panel with the old Thor and the, and the daughters, because you went back real fast, I'm like, is Thor partying up with, like, wenches? And then, <laughs> then, then he went there, like, oh, it's his daughters. I'm like, uh, who knows? Um, but... <laughs> that, that's the three granddaughters. <laughs> um, I thought the son was going to, like, kill the father. And then it turned out that the son wasn't even a son. He made up the wife and the kid out of the, the goo. Yeah, but... I, was, I was a little disappointed in that choice subjectively. Yeah. I really liked Gore being like bad, just fucking like despicably bad. Mm -hmm. And this whole idea that inside there was some good in him that helped him to butcher himself. It's like, I think that was like a cop out. And they threw the necrosword into a black hole. Ooh, that's not good. I like, you think I, like, <laughs> well, it's cool that they threw that in there. Because that's what gives us later on. Uh, well, not yes. gives yes. us later on, but helps in the story of uh, Null. Um, the, I, think I did cringe though. Whenever I see this, like in the distance, you see it like all three Thors are talking before the, the younger Thor stormed out. You saw how they had no faces. <laughs> like it was just painted over. It was weird. But well, it, it, part of the problem when I read panel by panel like this, it's like an extreme zoom in. And, and if those panels are really small panels, they're meant to be. Then though, then yeah. like it's like the art is usually you know it's just meant to be like a little thing, and I zoom it in, and it's like whoa, what the hell? So the art can actually suffer <laughs> because of that, or appear to suffer. But... See right there, Loki with the felt with the hammer on sale. <laughs> it's uh, unworthy Thor. Yeah. Ronnie says she thinks the art was rushed. I don't. I don't think the, the art's rushed. This is. <laughs> I don't know how how much more like awesome art do you need for a monthly comic? Like I don't. I don't know how you can criticize this art anyway, Ronnie. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, um. I I need a guy from that Garth Ennis book with the, with the Russians. I need his art. Is it Steve Epting? Oh yeah, I mean it's good art too, but. <laughs> Like I said, I mean, some of these panels look worse. Um, so, yes. Be, just because I'm I'm zooming in. If we go page by page, I just want to take a chance here to go. Instead it's a of, battle that never happened. No, we're the only ones who remember it. The, Thank you, the, Jason Aaron. You know, <laughs> where, so let's, let me find an example. Like here, Thor up in the sky. When you see it in the full page view, you're like, oh, that looks great. But when I zoom in like this, you're like, oh, it just drew Thor without a face, and it's like cheap art, and it's like, well, well not not that one. I also about the other one. Like, no, I was just using like, that as an example. Yeah, and I know if you go for, further back, and I think it's right there. Yeah, is that one the middle panel in the middle with the green girl? Yeah, so this is a small panel, and you but you like yeah. zoom it in <laughs> like that, and you're like, oh, that looks terrible. Um, yeah, but if I was most... reading like this, it's a lot more acceptable because. Yeah. Yeah, you don't expect detail in tiny little. Uh, but but I wonder what it looks like in the actual comic, though. You know, because that's I'm just clicked on it there. That's I, that's not page size. That's still small. Well, compared I'm... to at least on yours, it's all on on Discord for me. Yeah, mine it looks, is, it looks on my screen. It's about the size of a comic. Oh, okay. So yours is full screen. Okay. Yeah, I'm on my computer screen. But if you're like looking at your that... phone or something, then it's gonna be smaller. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, I'm Discord. It's just like size of uh but as i, I flip know. it through here full page i yeah. mean this is and i love this scene here i love that b point it's that's a bp oil spill door <laughs> the bp oil like... spill <laughs> <laughs> he's come here to avenge like i have come to avenge the seals bp <laughs> like... using the oil against no. you <laughs> uh, uh yeah i i, I... I like Asad Rabik quite a bit, and I like him for Thor. And when I, ever yeah. since I saw these pages long ago, I was like, I got to read this story one day. So I'm glad I did. Um, 
I don't know if I'll keep reading because I don't think a solder beak continues after this. I think it's a new artist, but um, it was fun. I liked Gore. I, I think Gore could have been even better. I really wish the character at the end was his son. Because yeah. it would have, I think it would have like helped him see his own evil even more. Like you killed my mother, and by changing it so that he never actually did kill his mother, and it wasn't like it was like, oh, you just erased yeah. all that. So they just made him like schizo. That's part of his his conscience. Like you're you're an idiot, you know. That's yeah, it mind. almost it almost gave him a an out. Like oh yeah, like you're just you just have mental problems. Like you're you're not really a bad guy. You're just you're just you know like schizo. <laughs> you're just, <laughs> we just need to put you in a crazy, you know, like an Arkham Asylum, like, right? So he didn't I mean to murder millions of people or billions of gods. Yeah, I would have liked. I do. Do I love that line when it was like Gore, the god of hypocrisy? Um, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> um, so Jimmy says five stars. Of course, this is Jimmy's favorite Thor story, if not his favorite comic story of all time. I know he I'll, really give, it a, loves I'll this. give it a four. I give it a I give it a four. Definitely. Um it's fun. Like I said, I, I mean I'm nitpicking here. I just see that Gore could have been even better in my opinion if a few little tweaks. Um I'm saying four I'm saying four because the idea of sharks in space. Sharks in space did it for you. With, without the sharks it's a three yeah <laughs> well no no it, 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 without the sharks it would have been a five five stars but is this it just felt kind of weird to me it's like the whole shark thing is it's like there's Thor riding a shark with a hammer <laughs> i was like what it's no it's like it's when you see those monkeys like little monkey riding like a dog at the at the circus show or the bull fights it's like what Mar right. Marani is arguing with me about the small panels not needing detail. Check out John Basima's panels in any book he's done. Marania, it's just like Marania, John Basima doesn't paint art. Like painting at that level of detail is, it's just you, you you'd have to paint it like really big and then shrink it down to get that. I mean, it, comparing it to the line art from John Basima is just it's kind of apples and oranges, in my opinion. Um, it it just threw me off though. It's like this is meant to be a serious book, and then they threw in comedy, like in that little the, the shark thing. There's no way you know, it's meant to be serious. Him running on a glowing green shark. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can't. <laughs> I think I think that was unintentional comedy. Yeah, yeah. That was the problem for me. Like I I like the comedy because there was a few lines where Thor would make a comment about getting drunk or something, and I think that's. That's like that's fine if you do it sparingly in the right moments. It'd be, it'd be like it'd be like if Thor came up riding a, a, a horse and then he came across Bill and Bill was offended. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> it was just it, it just came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it and it felt absurd. And so I just I just kind of lost myself. I was like, what the what the <laughs> fuck? What's a, just got a, he's riding a shark? But right, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's it's you, you see, you see, Moran is coming in. It's like Sharknado. Sharknado. <laughs> it's like... That's what they need. Sequel to Sharknado: Space Sharknado. <laughs> right. Uh, space sharks. Uh, so, does a pack of those space sharks take down a uh, star whale? Like, how does that work? I don't know. Like, what feeds on the star whale? Uh, let's see. Jimmy says, I won't listen to RDV on any comic book recommendations if the sharks were literally the thing that did it. Oh, Jimmy, he's speaking tongue in cheek. Come on. I give it I give it a four, and then he gets upset because it's not a perfect five. Yeah. It, well, just you know. be happy. Don't get upset. But just say that just I don't understand why you think you're upset about this, but I'm saying there's no reason to get upset. All that matters is you like the book. Why you don't shouldn't care about what Annabelle says, dude. I, I'm gonna say this: if if Jason Aaron only ever wrote Thor like this book, I would have a completely different opinion about Jason Aaron. Like I would not have all the negative things. I like you know I can be hypercritical about just about anybody, like, and you know 
even you know even Chris Claremont books I could pick up X Men and be like make make fun of some little panels here and there and be like oh look what they did that's kind of corny and dumb but um that'd be fine like if Jason Aaron wrote if this was Thor God of Thunder the entire run of Jason Aaron I'd be like yeah he did a fucking not my favorite Thor but definitely fun I mean I gave it four stars that's what I want I I expect a comic to be three stars when it's an ongoing mini series are different issues but if it's an ongoing comic I expect a three star if, if it's less yeah. than that you're a failure if I four stars like bonus like hey you're doing something good and I reserve five stars for like creme de la creme that's like Batman year yeah. one you know like the current Marvel today is like you're barely you're barely making a three if you even get it to a three you know out of five like with Daredevil and Kate's have been doing, it's been like four out of five for me. Like to get that perfect five to me, I have to really, really look be, like into the book, and that's what Walking Dead was for me. Was five. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Night, Melissa. Um, I don't want to give out fives very often because then they cease to mean anything. Like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. you just give out fives all the time. Like, I when I want to give a five out, I want you guys to be like, oh, but if, shit, but if Jimmy thinks it's a five. five that's to him. Like, to him, that for means, sure. That means the book did what the job was supposed to do, and he loves it. Yeah. And that's good. I mean, you got to find, if you're reading something and you're paying money for it, you want to love it. And if you're paying this and you're not loving it, it feels like you're being robbed. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's why Breen does not buy this stuff because he's not getting what he's putting money into. He feels robbed. Although I do think Breen liked this story. If I remember I'm not correctly. sure. I think I, thought, I could be wrong, but I want to say Breen said he did read this and he said, I, I this one, maybe I'm mixing something else up, but, but what's this season Eden? This is a Joe Corallo book. Ah, okay. So it was, uh, it's on sale in comiXology. So I decided to pick it up. Cause it's TKO. That's why I was like, after reading the other one. Yeah. So uh, TKO did this thing called shorts and, he, and you guys know TKO. What they do is go, they like they release one. all the issues at once. So does this go one shot? So let me explain. So <laughs> one of the things that they did was uh, that what was the name of that Sarah, which was the yeah the war I like book that. with yeah. So it, it came as a six issue series, and they release all the issues at once, and it comes in a little slip case box. It's all nice. That's their that's kind of their gig, like that your gimmick. Mm-hmm. TKO shorts is a similar thing. It's six issues, but each issue is its own individual comic. So think of it like ah, floppies. Think of it kind of like well, all of them are floppies, but it's kind of like a, um oh god, what's the term? The uh, anthology. Okay. So it's it you get you get six issues, but each issue is a different thing, um, and the first issue is Seeds of Eden. Which is a Joe Corallo story with? Do they all other tie people. in together, or are they just standalone? No, they're either standalone. Okay. So it was on sale. Um, I was like, "Oh, try it out, see the story." Um, cool. So I like that the whole space thing and the, the you know, Yeah, I thought. Uh, Reminds me of Gundam when they have the space colonies on the so, inside. They have so like two that. of them were on sale. This is the other one, Father of All Things. I don't know anything about this creator. Um. And it looked like a war book. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll try these out. Um, you know, support, support a creator I know. That looks and like World War One or World War Two. This looks like World War One to me. This trench warfare? Yeah. You know, yeah. I still haven't seen 1917, so I have to go back and watch it. Dude. <laughs> it's it's on my good, list. It's a good movie. <laughs> I, I, I hear that. But I've been I've been trying to watch all the current stuff so I could talk about that for reviews, dude. But if, 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 getting... if anyone, <laughs> when you if anyone goes you you watch nineteen seventeen, I want you to take notice something when you're watching it. The camera never cuts. That's good. It never cut. It's one take. It seems like it's like it's a, it's gonna be true when you're gonna, you're gonna see people getting ripped to shed by machine guns and all that stuff. But yeah, but like it never. There's no cut. The camera never like cuts to a different scene it, and it follows. It's yeah, obviously they did cuts, but they, yeah, like they, it, it's like uh, that other movie that did the same thing. 
Um, but it was less impressive because it was all in one building, which was uh, Birdman. Oh, okay. Um, but this yeah, gonna... this does the same thing as Birdman, where the camera never cuts to another scene. But in Birdman, you could kind of tell that they like hid the cuts, like they'd go from one room to another, and you know they'd pass like a black like shadow or something. You could tell that they mm-hmm. probably just hid the yeah. cuts in there, so it, the camera still never pans away. But this movie travels across France. <laughs> You're like, and the camera never cuts. You're like, Jesus, how did you film this? It's really impressive. And it's a good movie on, besides that, too. So uh, Jimmy says, thanks for reading, Ash. You're welcome, buddy. Um, I hope that uh, despite my opinions, you may agree or disagree with my opinions. I hope that I at least read it well for you. I did try. I didn't want to. I did not, you know, I did make some snide comments here and there, but as in the reading, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that thing that I see Zach sometimes do when he like, the book is shitty. So then he like reads the parts in like a stupid voice. And you're like, dude, you could read the best comic ever in a stupid voice and it'll sound stupid. <laughs> you know, like that's not really, I wanted to be genuine for the book. So, um, and like yeah, I said, I, we, sh- I, we should have had Arnold. Three Arnolds, and, Arnold. three Arnolds, and, three Arnolds, and three Arnolds on the ground. Like, no, that would have that would that would have made it dumb. Um, so uh, I hope people enjoyed it. Um, he had a fun time. It did seem like people were. That's why I stuck with it through the whole thing. Uh, do five, I, do five I, episodes. I know. I know you always talk about this. I get like you know when you come back and reading it, there's like there's no comments. So usually when I see that, to me it reminds me. I think I'm just thinking myself it's like. The reason there's no comments because people are just so engrossed in the actual, you know, thing, story. No, because that's how I kind of was, you know, but like, you know, you almost don't want to look away because you're enjoying the story that much. But then again, but the thing is, it's also in the back of your mind. I know you get this too, when you're by yourself, you're like, well, are there people just not watching? Do they like, are they busy? Like, like Dragon Ball Talk? <laughs> just watching like something else, you know? Sure, it's, right. It, yeah, I, I did notice that when, when a book is really good, it seems like the comments are less. When I was reading like America Chavez, I would get crazy comments <laughs> because <laughs> I'm sure. At least you're not getting like sports comments where they're just talking about sports. Uh yeah, you know, that's a sign that people are bored. <laughs> when you want to talk about other things. It's like, like uh Did you see this? It's like like Zach, he's, he's, he said I'll step I'm stepping away. That was like two almost like 10 20 minutes ago and i, I was looking at it, it's like yeah I, I, and i said like i guess i said no in the chat i was like dude are you still here are you are you watching loki <laughs> uh, uh, dude, that sucks if you're watching loki <laughs> you're on a live stream <laughs> yeah i mean it'd be I different can't... like in the old days when like tv just was broadcast and you had to watch it when it was on but now right. you can literally watch it whenever it's it's waiting for you um which is good because I mean, and also bad too. It's like sometimes you want you want that. Uh, well, especially especially uh, the people who are writing these books, they want you to like be salivating for the next issue. It for them, it's like, oh, this guy just read it within like ten issues of the one setting. It's like and now he's waiting for the next one. It's it's like, dude, like because because the whole thing is like, I, I like how um, Amazon does it in. There, and this, 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 this one. You want to release it once at a time because it makes the whole need for wanting to buy the next issue great. You know, they don't like people like me who just like binge reading stuff, waiting till it's done, just buying the trade. Because imagine if everybody did that, nobody bought the floppies. Like, the majority of your people are just buying the trades. That's 30 bucks. When they can get, like, you know, a lot more money out of you to just buying the floppies at four bucks an issue. Mm-hmm. I mean, I always, I always wonder about that too because a lot of us are like, well, what brothers had the trades? It's less room. But I've also noticed that the, the volumes are like, are just like, there's like volume 37. It's only like, it's it's not even six issues. Sometimes it's like five. And it's just like, there's just. Oh, Marvel's just, really bad, man. Marvel's like oh, guilty of the four issue trades. Oh my gosh. It's just like, at that point, you're like, well, do you want to get this? Well, then you have to get the, the compendium or the omnibus. And then the omnibus is like, it's a huge freaking thing, but it but it also costs you like two hundred to three hundred bucks sometimes. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Marvel's the most expensive when it comes to like the trades and things. Um, I mean, I, but that's image, why I like image. Uh, you really I, save, you know, when you get the trades. 
But I don't know. I my thing is this: like, if it's a mini series, most of the time, I'm gonna wait for the trade because there's so many. I mean, everything's a mini series these days, and it used to be you only did mini series when you're doing something really special. Like nowadays, it's just like mini. They do mini series because they're doing shit and they know it's gonna get canceled in five issues, so they just do a five issue mini series. Um, I mean, I do like it for like for Xenoscope because they're like they're not a big company. Like they do the, but now Xenoscope's actually giving you like you know for like eight bucks, you're getting like seventy two pages. Look, I don't. Like, you know, all the critiques that I say are less applied to the smaller of a publisher you are, because yeah. you don't have all the same freedoms and liberties and things that that the big companies do. So mm -hmm. yes, for sure, Xenoscope. For sure, you know if you're publishing it out of your bedroom or something. I do you, like it. You but have a those different. Companies, yeah. You have a different, a whole different paradigm. You know, just the fact that you could get books published, you do whatever you need to do. But I'm just saying, as a consumer, I want to buy ongoing issues, especially from the the big two. I want mm -hmm. an ongoing series. If you say, look we can't give you more than five issues of Captain America. Then I'm just like, well, then why should I buy Captain America? Are you telling me like you, you don't want to invest enough to get a writer and artist that's competent to deliver a series. What's this new thing that Captain, the, the Marvel just announced they're bringing out. God, I can't remember. I was like, what are you kidding me? They're making a series. And it's like, Oh, it's only five issues. Um, God, I just heard it. And I can't remember what it is. Was that Lee comic gates or is it? Um, no, I just heard the news that they were, I think Perch did a video on it, probably about some new book. I, and it's like a Marvel character and, you know, that hasn't, you know, it's like, what? if you're only going to do five issues, why do it at all? That's, I just don't understand this. Like if your, if your books don't sell, then like Valkyries, why is Valkyries having a second run? It fa utterly failed the first time. And now it's back with the same creator. Like, do you think it's going to do better? It's not. It's going to get canceled again. Um, oh, what's that other book that was a season? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Static. It's not the one I'm thinking okay. of, but but Static. Like, oh, season one. I'm like, this is bullshit. You're just not wanting to commit to it. Oh, you're talking about Amazing Fantasy. No, I'm not right. talking about Amazing Fantasy. I'm, well, I'm... Gary Andrews is doing one. He's writing Amazing Fantasy one of five for, for Marvel. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm mixed feelings on this because I, I love Carrie Andre. <laughs> Carrie Andre. <laughs> By the way, guys, uh, pick up erratic that we were waiting for the trade. It came out on uh, June 2nd. The erratic trade is only nine 99. So if you get discounts, it's probably even cheaper. Um, did I hear Zach trying to butt in? I don't know. Uh, couldn't, I couldn't no, he... tell. Oh, he's still muted. Um, let's see if it's yeah, there's Gamma. There's Gamma Flight coming out too. Little five issues things. A lot in July. Yeah, Gamma Flight. Are you kidding me? Come on. Aliens Aftermath. Oh, Trials of Ultraman. Yes. Where? Yeah, there's a lot of series coming. There's a whole new X Men team coming out. There's not as the Wave X. Uh, is this it? I think this is it. So, yeah, 128 pages. So this is the trade. Um, you can get it on of Amazon if your if your store doesn't have it. 9.99 free shipping with Prime. Uh, oh yeah, they're getting it later because the trade doesn't come out. It comes out in the direct market first. So June twenty second for Amazon, but get your local comic store. This is man, I love this book. So anyway, like again, yeah, that's oh my the value for for nine ninety nine. It's a five issue miniseries. It's like half the price. You would have paid four dollars an issue. So oh my paid... gosh! Sorry, I'm reading ahead of Marvel stuff. I saw a Captain Marvel preview where she's fighting against herself. They just, uh, they just revealed that in, in Captain Marvel 30, she's going to, because she's, she's, she's been having these visions, basically saw a vision where she, the whole universe is destroyed. Well, they just said that now she's about to face the hard truth. No magic can, the universe can save her from herself. 
<sighs> so, oh my gosh. They just, they just admitted that she destroys the Marvel Universe. Go team! And continue. Who do you... Just go on... I'm just going through the cringe. No, I just I just want to promote this book because go ahead. It just I just liked it so much, and I like to see good good books get rewarded. Um, you know, because there's just so much crap that's just out there. Um, that let's go back to the new comics. Um, you know, like people are saying, like, Ooh. oh yeah, Nightwing's not doing it for him. Like, um. Fantastic Four. Who cares? Like, at least it's an ongoing. Let me think of the books that aren't ongoing. Um, Dude, I'm going through these Marvel situations like previews, and I've looked at like probably a hundred books. I've only seen like one that actually made me like, and that's whenever I see like the Thor previews for Kate's. It's like, it's like, dang. It's like it's just sad because like there used to be like I got into comic books around 2003 till five. I started reading, and. I used to go look at the the previews coming up, and I was just like, dude, I'm getting like 40 books. You know, everything that's out there, I was getting like 90% of everything that's coming out. And now I'm looking at everything now, it's just like, it's the opposite. I'm getting like 1% even of anything that's coming up. About 90 books are going to probably push out the next like two, three months. It's ridiculous. You know, I can't believe Savage Avengers is at 22. That's That just blows my mind. Some of the stuff is like, it's, it's, as you said, it's like Captain Marvel has been rebooted like 15 times now. And now they're using ideas from fans and fancy that she's the worst thing out ever. And now they're using that idea. <laughs> it's like, come on. Can't rant over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, hate I, this, I hate this season thing. I hate when they don't tell you how long it's like, oh, it's going to be. How long is this oh. issue one of what? Oh. I don't know. It's episode one. Episode one. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's the British series. Yeah, I mean, at least. Yeah, I mean, I gotta hand it to him. Catwoman's in the thirties. You know, um, I don't know. Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Here, here's a mini series. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to believe the Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, is going to be anything. That she has a, does she have a sword in her hand? Huh. Yeah, of course she does. A Kryptonian blade. Um, well, because remember she's a badass trained by uh, Wonder Woman. Um, uh, so, so she killed the Wonder Woman. That's, that's the whole thing in 2020s. Women are just badasses. It's not heroes. You're badasses. A lot of trades coming out too. Uh, yeah, this red and blue. Like, is anyone going to care about this red and blue in a couple years? Wasn't but... Skip reading that? <laughs> I think he picked up an issue. And then you got to remember you guys were getting He picked it up because there was a certain story in there by, by, a, by, a his, by his friend, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I can understand if there's a certain artist or something. But I'm saying as a whole, as a product, when you're paying five ninety nine an issue, this is not going to be an ongoing series. Like it'll, it, it, and then no one will care about it. This will fall down the memory hole. Just if they like, want four ninety nine, it has to be the Venditti digital run. Five nine nine, not four nine nine. Five ninety nine. Well, I, I, even then, it's for Venditti. I'll give you six bucks for Venditti because he's worth it. He proved it on the Superman Man of Tomorrow, the well, digital run. He's worth release he's, those. He's worth three ninety nine. Three ninety nine is already too much. I'm not gonna continue just to pay more ridiculous amounts of money because there's but, good artists or writers. Those I good like, writers are doing books for three ninety nine. <laughs> but I'd rather have my six bucks go to Venditti. And screw. And, and I certainly would man. too, but I can also give three ninety nine <laughs> to Jeff Johns for Geiger. Yeah, you know, like there's not a dearth of bad book or good books for three ninety nine. I said I would love like these guys like Jeff Johns and then like you know I mean I, obviously they probably don't have the money and stuff, but I would love they would have bought like DC or Marvel Comics and actually just brought it back to what it was, you know, and write writing the story. Gerald is crap. But like I said, how the way Marvel and DC treat their writers, never had enough money to buy anything. You know, some of some of them live comfortable lives, yes. Uh, but I wonder if all that money is coming out of it. Because look at they're doing with uh, Brubaker and all the royalties and stuff. You know, you create a character and they're like, oh, you know, they screw you over in the contract. It's it's just the way the corporates become. It's it's, it's disgusting. They don't care about the, they've never cared about these characters. It's just a means to end. You yep, know? and that's that's the way of corporations. That's why Marvel and DC were better when they were small publishers. 
Or well, they weren't small. Yeah. They weren't small publishers. They were small corporations. But then they each kind of got bought. DC became a puppet of Warner Brothers. If you're going to run a company, you got to have someone like who has the heart of Stanley Hadford, compassion for comic books. Not yeah. this whole nonsense. You got you care about the reader and you care about the story. You don't you're not you could care less about what's going on in the world as far as politics. You know? You're not inserting crap like you know, like you know, like like you know, uh immigration and all that stuff, you know, like they did with Greg Ruck as Lois Lane. That was but oh my gosh. That book the Lois Lane book made me want to read Captain Marvel. Look at this. That's that's how bad that book was. Ninja High School is on issue one hundred and eighty. Looks like anime or manga. Yeah, it's very manga influenced, at least the art style. I don't know if this is any good. I'm not endorsing the book. I, it's just but one I'm, just, guy I'm, just, I'm saying Antarctic Press. They're not Marvel. They're not DC. <laughs> they're able to publish this book, 180 issues, like been That's around crazy. been around for 35 years. They're just doing it right, you know. And I'm sure fans of that book are totally happy. <laughs> like. No one sitting there. I don't hear anyone bitching about like, ah, oh, damn, Ninja High School is stupid. Like, no one just, you know, it has its fans. Um, Dragon cool. Ball, you you uh, left. That's why you missed the comics. We read three freaking comic books. If you left and you missed it, that's your own damn fault. Yeah, I read. <laughs> I read. Normally, read two comics. I read three tonight. So if you missed, for how long the stream's been going? Yeah. If you yeah. missed, if you missed all three <laughs> comics, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, if somebody I, clicked in now, I'm very they grateful. Up too. I'm very grateful to have you here. But if you want to tune out and go, I mean, sorry. <laughs> like we had no breaks. Yeah, there was really no breaks in between the comic books. You just read them. Oh, there was a small breaks, but yeah, no but more not than like, like five minutes. Yeah. So. So. So, so, yeah, so speaking of not. speaking of breaks, um, just a little self plug here. Uh, I've gone through and edited all of the indie comic show and criminal cast episodes so that they don't have any of the silence in the beginning or the end. It's all concise and tight. And I've also am in the process of getting them up on podcasts. So if you're the kind of person that goes, oh, I don't want to watch those in long format or whatever on YouTube or whatever, but maybe you might listen to it, a podcast at work or something. Um, you can look for them. Um, and uh, if you have any problems, you know, get them up there. Um, I'm very much looking forward to hopefully finding further audience or providing more value to the audience that I have. Because I know some people don't like to watch live streams after the fact, um, which I can understand if you're engaged and you're sitting here and you're typing. Yeah. But I know me, like I like to listen to podcasts when I'm driving or if at work, you know, and it's just something in your ear to kind of keep your mind going while you're fighting boredom. <laughs> And monotony um yep. so that might be an option for you guys if you didn't know i currently have uh the unnamed indie comic show i'm gotta i gotta get the criminal cast next and i'm very excited i'm uh to get the, the whole podcasting going uh it's through um it's spotify owned company called anchor and um it's and it's cool i'm I'm very excited because I've always, I've wanted to do podcasts for a long time. That's why my show is formatted like podcasts. Um, I just don't want to do the whole pain in the ash stuff that podcasts normally involve where you have to like host your stuff yourself. And this anchor company does it all for you and uh, for free. So I think they might be the future of podcasting. Anyways, so that was that. Um, we should probably wrap this up. Otherwise, we'll be on all night. It's already... Oh my god! Almost one o'clock. Supposed to end. I know, it's, it's supposed it's to end an hour ago. I got. I got to watch Loki and then uh, read some books and then go buy some books later on. Yeah, that's probably where. It's probably where he, Zach is. His wife probably yelled him. We're watching Loki now. I'll be that's right. Hey. Where Zach is. Hey, no, man. my wife is working tonight. So. Where, 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 where have you been for the past half hour? Well, part of it was I had to let my dog outside before I put him to bed. And then the other part was I was catching Loki in case Puppetine wanted to do a recap tonight. I knew no, he was he, watching Loki. I told you. Uh, told. I can tell you, Loki, Loki's Friday. Oh, is it Friday? Oh, uh, okay. I thought Castlevania was Friday. I think he's canceling it. Oh, uh, okay. No, well, because nobody cares about it, apparently. Oh, it's <laughs> so good, though. I, I know. 
Oh, well. Sorry about that, though, guys. I just... So you have to week... step away from the stream you're on to prepare for the stream that you're going to be on. Yeah, well, last week I missed. I wasn't able to because the internet went out. I didn't want to... I wanna... see how it is. So I, 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 I didn't want to hold up Puppeteen. I, I rank number two to Puppeteen. I, I was with you. you. should. <laughs> As we all do, we all do. All you right. were also reading, though. You were also reading, so I didn't want to. Well, I he figured... stopped. Yeah, he I know. Didn't... You're gone half an hour after you left. He stopped reading. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> and now my failure will be immortalized forever at the tail end of this live stream. Zach's a stream hopper. <laughs> He's a groupie. Comes yeah. on and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Zach, for showing up tonight along with you, RDV. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you guys on, and makes the uh, I think it makes the, the the talking parts better. And uh, I do I do enjoy doing the hangout stuff. I am gonna wrap it up because I I like I said I tried to end an hour ago. <laughs> That's my goal. Um, <laughs> but um, I'll. No, I probably shouldn't go in. I might go into Discord for a few minutes in case anyone wants to talk. I don't want to be talking all night, though. Um, so anything final for you guys you want to say before we tie a bow on this? Um, make sure you check, tune in to I Love Comics on Thursday for a throwback Thursday. I forget what book it is, but uh, yeah, yeah every, th every Thursday and Friday, you know, there is streams going on. Yeah, uh, and... Uh... You know, like I said, uh, over on I Love Puppets, if, if you want to see a puppet or two, recap and talk about modern superhero shows. Yeah, those puppets really beat down on Zach. They really do. It's almost abusive. For uh, comedy. You're on, you're on the puppet show? Yeah, every, when I can be. I'm not on, like, everyone. Like, I'm not watching Batwoman or Superman. Are you on as a puppet? No, no. no. I'm oh. an actual human. Oh. It's kind of it's that Muppet show kind of I see. kind of chemistry. You have to have a human to offset the Muppet. It's like Sesame Street, you know, Sesame but it's Street, but it's but it's more violent. A little bit. So like There's the Muppet the... show. <laughs> like yeah. Were... All right. The Muppet show. If the Muppet show allowed, well, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say if it allowed hands going inside the puppets, like. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways. Um... <laughs> Good night, everybody. Hey, is that Thor and Ruby? Oh, sorry, it's just his leg. <laughs>